What is up, everybody? Welcome to the ASL Season 12 Wildcard Match. Um, as many of you might have heard, Larva is not going to be competing in the second season of ASL this year for 2021. Uh, I believe he's been having some issues with his wrist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And always the right move there is to take some time off uh, and actually let your tendons heal up and, totally. and recover. So. Uh, we have a special match that we're going to be casting. There's going to be four players all fighting to try to get that spot that Larva earned because he was the champion of the last season. Yeah, so someone's going to be earning a seed here tonight. It's a four-man tournament, a couple Terran versus Protosses, and then, of course, the final match to see who's going to end up winning that. So a beautiful match, a great way to start out Season 12. And, of course, welcome back to you guys. Thank you so much to everyone who supports us on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Yeah, because of you guys, we are still able to do what we love, and we're still able to support StarCraft uh, in the English language with our casting, so we really appreciate it. And I'm excited to have some extra stuff to cast in between. You know, ASL, um, look, man, it's one of the great esports tournaments, maybe the greatest mm -hmm. uh, with all the history that comes with Brood War, but... It's not that long, so to have something extra to squeeze in here is very nice. It, it's pretty awesome. Now, uh, this was the round of eight bracket from last season. Uh, the four players that did not make it to the round of four, because that gives you a seed, will be playing. So that's best, JYJ, Snow, and Rush. Those four players are going to be vying for that final seed. Uh, it's a great way to do it. Of course, we're going to have Mini, Queen, and Hero all back with their seeds in the round of 16. That's right. So, um... This is just a real treat in general, these matches that we're going to have here. And this could very well be a real deep dive uh, into TVP in general here if we end up with our finals. Uh, yeah. Protoss and a Terran here. But no matter what, we're going to be unpacking TVP uh, in our first two uh, matches. And again, I got to say, man, I think PVT's undergone some pretty interesting changes. Oh, I know yes. in the past, <laughs> I especially, and I don't know how much you agreed with me at the time, but a couple of years ago, we kind of talked about how this matchup was basically solved. Hmm. And it was either carriers or arbiters, but you know we've seen the revolution of speed shuttles. We've seen more than one robo be made. Yeah. Um, and it just seems like StarCraft One keeps aging like a fine wine. Yeah, definitely the case. Uh, and you know it it has changed a lot lately, and we'll talk about that as we do get into the games. First up, going to go ahead and introduce these players. Of course, JYJ kind of made some upsets, getting directly into the round of eight. He kind of crushed through and did a great job. Uh, until, of course, Queen took him out, and you can't really fault him for losing to Queen, the most dominant no. player in ASL now that Flash is gone. Uh, but, yeah, he's he's going to be here playing. And the thing is, I think he's an underdog, but JYJ is legit as hell in Terran vs. Protoss. Like, he really he has all the builds, he has all the skills, but he's up against Best, who's pretty monstrous. Yeah, I mean, Best, it's, it's kind of a tragic end that he had in the last season of ASL. He got cheesed out by many, and mm -hmm. some of the shortest, <laughs> most straightforward losses. Uh, you it, was, it was one of the worst series that we could ever have had. It was, like, literally just proxy gate. Well, not only that, it was proxy gate into, oh, your one gate is misplaced. Well, watch this. The pylon on the left and the pylon on the right <laughs> will wall you in. And, I mean, this is all... Yeah. Very basic stuff here for PvP, but it, it did cost him the game, which mm -hmm. is kind of shocking. Yeah, You're supposed to basically uh, set everything up to avoid that situation, but he's back here now, and I think we're going to have some better games from Best this time around. All right, let's get into this first match. It's a best of three starting off on Polypoid, probably our best standard map out there. Here we go. In the top right, our Terran player is JYJ. And his opponent. Maybe the best PVT in the world right now. If you don't count the other guy playing here tonight, it's Best. And I got to tell you, I think Best is, is super strong still. Uh, you know, he's still looking for that championship that's been eluding him for half of his life. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's painful, but JYJ is still on the rise. And... Uh, like, I give Best the edge here, but not by a great margin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think Best maybe a little bit of an edge here. We'll, we'll see how he performs. Um, Polypoint is a fantastic map. I do think we're due for some map changes here on the ladder. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, that being said, I think Polypoint has been, uh, I think for everybody who's still learning, a great map to play on. 
Oh. This is this is the best standard map in my opinion. It's so yeah. interesting. It's yeah. really it's so much better than a map like Fighting Spirit or Circuit Breakers. It, the terrain is very interesting. Uh, you can have huge macro games. You can have rushes. Uh, there's it's a just, lot. Of, it's a beautiful map. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can play, uh, especially in this matchup, play out mm -hmm. the games. I mean, you know, Terran can go for quick pushes or, or do early rushes, or they can try to go into a third base or, or really turtle and try to go into four bases. That seems mm -hmm. to be a little bit risky on this uh, map. And for Protoss, there's just so many ways to play as well. Arbiter play is generally acceptable on any map, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've seen the usage of, uh, of speed shuttles as well as storm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. implored on this map. We've seen uh, occasionally surprise carrier tech set up here. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it lends itself to a lot of different openers in the early game and a lot of different tech in the late game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that being said, we actually have here a Nexus first from best. Now, let's yeah. see the direction. JYJ looks like he's going to go to the south. Um. If he ends scouts, he'll find best quickly enough that he can punish. Uh, and that's that's if, of course, he goes directly into factory here. And I see him mining with three on gas. So, yeah, he should be going directly into that. And now we just kind of see how JYJ wants to play it, right? It's a little bit stylistic for Terra, but the general... And, and this is something I, I see a lot of people get confused about. Uh, the Marine SCV Vulture Rush against Nexus First is the actual macro opening against Nexus First. Yeah, so this is uh, this could be misleading uh, to a lot of people, even if you really think you are pretty familiar with StarCraft. Uh, sometimes when you talk to people, you find out, oh, okay, they don't quite see what's happening here. Um, the number of workers that come can punish the Protoss so heavily um, that things balance out. So it can look like it's an all-in, but it's not. Yeah, it's it's really truly not. Well, yeah. if you screw it up, you lose. But like, you shouldn't well, screw it up. Yeah, if if, uh, you, if you do it, there's a lot of things in Brood War. If you screw it up, you just die yeah. outright. But <laughs> if you do it correctly, you, you're going to level the playing field. I mean, this is uh, a, a really abusive opening mm. from Protoss because they can. Um, I mean, basically, Terran doesn't get the tech they want until the factory's done and the add-ons are done. So, what the Protoss wants to do is just squeeze out this expansion. Mm and then have just enough to hold off any rush and, and, and pedal ahead, basically, economically, from the Terran. It looks like it's a Vulture expand here from JYJ. He actually, he started to go end scout, and then he sent his SCV to the bottom left. So I would I would call that a little bit unlucky, right? Like, yeah. he, it looked like he had some interesting scout pattern in his mind that he wanted to do. Uh, but now he's he's just going to be a bit behind. Oh, and he misses a vulture shot there. I okay. can't believe that. It's one out of 250. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's another missed that's, one. Wow, all right. Well, I mean, that does oh, happen. Oh, no, no. It, that, was, that was a heal shot. Okay, that's what that was. It takes three shots at that point. But, uh, yeah, that's it's, it's a little bit unfortunate because now his build order, it's not the end of the world, but he actually had a build that could kill the Nexus. Yeah. And now he just can't do any damage at all. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I mean, if, if you find it in time, uh, find the Nexus in time, you, you have room to try to react and and throw the Protoss off balance. But the Protoss is basically where he wants to be. There's going to be two more Dragoons coming out, and that's going to make a total of four. And four Dragoons is kind of the magic number for Dragoons in this matchup because you can two-shot uh, tanks as well as Vultures. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of over damage there. It's six shots to kill a Vulture, but... You get the idea, right? I mean, being able to two-shot anything is extremely powerful. Um, and so that puts uh, a, a little bit of a strain here uh, on the Terran. There's not a lot you can do to try to get any damage off. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, Artosis, but I've always felt like one of the stronger plays against this is drop. Would you agree with that, Chris Terran? Well, drop is uh, it's risky. Like, it, obviously, if you get the drop off and do the damage, it's amazing. But... You, you, like, you don't expect it to work against a player of the best caliber. Right. So very few Terrans at high levels actually do drops against Nexus first. It's just a bit predictable. Like, look at how Bess is actually just sitting back. He's going to reasonably quick observers. He's putting stuff on the side of his base to spot anything coming in. I think likely what we'll see from Best is direct tech either into Carrier or into Arbiter and a third base. And... He's you know, losing these vultures really. Mm, one of the one of the weirdest micro fights I've seen. Like, I think Best literally would. He's gonna kill all three vultures ooh. if that last one attacks. Yeah, he's sending the tank. Okay, I was gonna see. He might go up to last shot the uh, 
the, the dragoon, dragoon there, but run away. Yeah. yeah, there's like you can before a uh, goon range, you can actually hit goons with a vulture and not get hit. Like if you do it just, just, just mm -hmm. right. But okay. yeah, he's he's unable to get that one. Uh, but here, best comes. It looks like he's getting ready for that third base. And on JYJ's side, you see right, like he's he's got some units, but he doesn't, he can't really do anything right now. Right. Um. So the Nexus is going to be made. This is fast Arbiter tech, unless uh, I'm getting a bad read on this. We saw the Citadel made down there mm. in the bottom of the main. And, uh, yeah, there's a Stargate. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's going to tech into that Arbiter pretty quickly. And I think this is a perfectly acceptable way to play. The Observer hasn't scouted the Terran, but we do see an armory he's making, which basically means you're not going to be attacking anytime soon. Yeah, this is, like, probably the safest thing that you can do uh, with Nexus first is... Just make non-stop units, get observers, and go into Arbiter in three base. And, like, uh, honestly, from the, the Terran point of view, there's not really a counterplay to this. You just kind of macro and, and try to weather the storm. Because right. Protoss is going to have quick Arbiters. They're going to be maxing out way ahead of you. Your third base is going to be way slower than theirs. Obviously, your natural's way slower than theirs. It's, oh, that's stuck. Yeah, that was a little bit sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> um... By the way, the Dragoons ran up and, and shot at the bunker, and that made the tank siege, and now he knows for sure what, what upgrades have been mm. developed. And when you see them go for siege mode, you can do a, a, a light contain outside their base. You know, you're not worried about Vulture speed right away. Um, and so it's it's going to be a bit of a slower game here. Uh, Terran has not made a third command center or anything that's going to really indicate what his plans are. We're basically watching to see, is it going to be a command center, or is it going to be more factories? We see two more factories coming down now. Mm, yeah, the, so he's going four factory and starport here. Uh, and there's an observer on top of all of it, an observer in front of his base. So it's like best sees everything. He's ahead in tech. He's ahead in economy. Yeah. Uh, like he can just do a gateway explosion at this point, do nothing but make units and get into his arbiters. The, the, there's like what JYJ is doing here is a bit desperate because two fa or, uh, two base play doesn't really kill two base arbiter. Like two base arbiter is actually one of the safest builds that you have as Protoss. It's oh just, yeah. It's incredibly difficult to break with anything uh, early on as Terran, especially armory openings. Oh, what's this? Look at that. So he's just gonna try to Handsome. snag a base over here in the center right. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit tricky, right? Because yeah. you see all these factories in his main base, so it definitely looks and feels like it could be uh, a quick timing push, and oh my god, he actually got so many probes there, I wasn't expecting that many, so yeah, I really was talking about it. Dragoons firing up a ramp can end up with some pretty uh, depressing consequences, because, you know, they don't fire that fast, so Vulture's getting a few extra hits off over there, very mm. nicely done. Um, but again, I think this is also a situation where if the Protoss just sees the command center, they can go kill it, and yes. he just sees the command center. Yeah, JYJ is starting to move down, throwing down a turret. Looks like he wants to get some units over to block. But this this is making me real nervous because in the next about three minutes, if if Bess has chosen the strategy, uh, like if he's not taking a fourth base, okay, he actually has started his fourth nexus, I was going to say, but uh, you can actually max out and just like you're not going to be able to hold his position as JYJ. But he is taking a fourth. So maybe JYJ has time to, to set this up. But this does feel like he's spread pretty darn thin against Arbiter. Yeah, it's not looking good. That much is for sure. Like, I really like the Protoss' position, like, a lot. Yes. Um, yes. And I just see what Terran's doing, and I don't feel like there's any opportunities here. And once the first... Uh, let me put it like this. Once the first Arbiter gets 150 energy... Uh, which is how much it costs to do a recall. That's when usually the systematic breakdown of the Terran starts. Mm. Um, because with the way the Terran's developed, they're not completely walled off with turrets. The third base isn't very safe. There's actually a lot of ways to, to kind of handle this as Protoss. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he, honestly, even if he doesn't go recall, like the max stasis push that yeah. can come at like 12 minutes is so so strong and if you're set up like this kind of against a wall and spread this thin that's going to be hard to hold on against as well now there's a drop ship coming but best it has three dragoons in there yeah he's coming up with the rest 
he's going to be able to very easily uh, deflect that for now. Hopefully, the dropship's going to find, like, another route and around. When you see one dropship, you just make cannons that he's expansion and go on, you mm -hmm. know? Dropships have a very specific moment to, to be impactful, and once you've seen it and chased it away, usually that moment's gone. Mm -hmm. well, right now, both of them kind of hitting their stride as far as macro goes. Uh, JYJ getting quite a bit of supply here. Best as well. He's on his four bases. He has his Arbiter Tech out. Uh, continued upgrades for JYJ, no doubt. And, I mean, I hope this gets into a nice macro game, but I feel like Best is going to have a really strong move coming up, and it does look like it's going to be a recall. You saw that Observer move to the left there out of the main. Yeah. That's, that is kind of spotting to keep an eye on turrets. Yeah, you just don't want to blindly run in there and discover there's way too many turrets to deal with. So uh, we're about to get to that to that climax here. Now, he sees three Dragoons, which is basically enough that it's not really worth it to try to attack in. Mm -hmm. Um, best actually expanding out to the other natural over here in the bottom left, which is a perfectly acceptable location to take. Um, there's an inevitability in positions like this that the uh, uh, Protoss is going to end up taking another mm -hmm. main. All right, well, here we go. We have one turret in the main, two turrets in the main right now. This is this is uh, going to be painful. And he's going to recall right up here in oh, this corner. Boy. And uh, he's actually going to keep the Arbiter alive. Oh, man, it gets worse and worse. Now, yeah. the, the SCVs are kind of glitching this, so it's not as much damage as he could have gotten right at the beginning, but JYJ has to bring this all back now, and he needs to clear this quickly. Yeah, and I mean, this is just a ton of damage. It's very mm -hmm. difficult to deal with for the Terran, and, you know, look, the Terran will eventually clean it up. It wasn't like he managed to, for instance, snipe the command center mm -hmm. or, or maybe get both of the armories, but... Uh, usually this forces the Terran to pull away with some of their army, and then it, le it leaves a soft spot. I mean, Terran's uh, mech is very strong when it's actually set up and ready for fights. But when it's not, uh, it, you know, they have to spend all this time repositioning. Great stasis Whoa. there. I don't know why best stasis are just bigger than normal stasis. <laughs> I know. I can't believe it got the bottom tanks and the vulture. Yeah, that's insane. That vulture at the top <laughs> and the siege tank in the bottom left are both... Uh, they're so far away, I, uh, honestly, that looks bigger than a stasis radius. Yeah, no, it really does. <laughs> uh, now, Best has refilled in his army. He wants to try to push it again. Uh, a little sloppy there. Did not have the Dragoons in sync with the uh, hmm. uh, Zealots. But honestly, I don't think that was extreme damage on the Terran. I think Terran weathered that pretty well. Well, uh, Terran definitely lost a decent chunk of SCVs. It's kind of it's slowing him down, no doubt. But right, it's not the end of the game or anything like that. I, I like the move from Best overall, though. Uh, now the Vulture's actually catching some of these probes. It's nice to catch the probes, but this late against someone who went Nexus first with like the yeah. speed of his third, the speed of his fourth, that doesn't actually hurt Best as much as it looks like it does. No, the vultures, in fact, are probably more important than the probes. So you see he pulls them back. He doesn't really suicide them. Gets what he can. Gets out of there. Yeah, it's uh, it's a funny thing, right? Like, you see a lot of workers killed, and it, it is a big deal. But the reality is Terran needs to basically have this maxed out army that's going to eventually be better than what Best has and try to push out that way. Mm -hmm. Best is getting another base. The fifth base is up in that bottom left. Uh, he is going to be taking that main relatively soon. We see him adding some gateways in there and everything, which is pretty standard. Clearing out the middle of the map right now for some more circulation. Of course, JYJ doing his best to clog it up with some of these mines for spotting. And finally, the dropship is going to get in. Yeah, remember the dropship? <clears throat> well, here it is. It's coming forward. And, um, I mean, this is going to be a little bit annoying here, but it looks like this should be cleaned up mm. pretty easily. Keep in mind, Terran doesn't have a fourth base yet. Um... The natural expansion where uh, the, the best is occupying would be the most obvious location for Terran to try to get. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a weird game because Terran didn't expand to the mineral only first. I feel yeah. like that's not really normal, but it's not as common. He got away sure. with it. Yeah, yeah. The, it's much more common to just take that mineral base. It, it gives you a nice little triangle to defend. But I mean, it's it's working out fine for him. You see, he has banked a ton of extra gas from right. that that three o'clock base that he took. So that can get useful. Like, if he keeps constant vessel production up, that's going to be really nice for him in the late game. So Bess is maxed out, and JYJ is almost maxed out. Um, but there's no easy target to hit here. Um, I don't know where the other Arbiters are or how much energy they have, but it doesn't seem like there's a really easy spot to try to recall it. Nice kill there on mm. the, the dropship as well. 
Yeah, Bess is really on top of it, catching these dropships oh. so often. That was a brutal <laughs> collision course into the cloaked army. Yeah, that's always painful. That's like a very common tactic as Terran is you run vultures out and towards where you want the dropship go to go, right? So the tanks have more time to deal damage. Right. Unfortunately, both get caught. Right. And really nothing gets done there. But you know what? The army is not in perfect position, so he comes up. Oh, hey. gets him with the MP. Beautifully done. But this is some high templars coming out as well. The tanks are clumped. Ouch. Yeah, some great Psy Storms back there. Uh, I don't think he could push any further forward here, but he could immediately fill that back in, uh, the supply back in with all the gateways he's got in both of the mains, uh, and try to maybe push from there. Yeah, it's tough, right? Like, they both go down the same supply, sure, but you see Best with a much bigger bank and more bases, so he has more income there as well. But JYJ is going to push forward with his tanks. He has to get this fourth base up, like you mentioned. Okay, so uh, Terran is going to get that fourth, but that could be a, a target again here. Best might have the opportunity to try to flood this a couple more times, mm -hmm. but you got to be careful uh, as Protoss because if you overextend you know, too many times here, you're going to have depleted you know, the armies that you could have hung on to. But it's kind of a precarious position here for Best. There's no easy way to end this game. JYJ still has a lot more time on the clock, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, before he has to end this. And I mean, we, we expect this, if it's going to end, probably with Terran coming out with a push and killing the Protoss, or the Protoss has actually managed to control uh, the Terran, and the Terran just can't grow and depletes his own resources. Well, it's always, uh, like at this point in Polypoid, getting that fifth base is always kind of the tricky part as Terran. You try to take 12, which is really hard to reinforce. Or do you take the mineral base or bottom right that's to that that south uh, location, right? So I'm not sure exactly what JYJ's plan is. Obviously, he's about maxed out. He's got fantastic upgrades with plus three attack already done. So he can attempt to push, but against both Arbiters and Psy Storm, that can be a little bit difficult. And if you're too clumped up, you might end up losing the game from trying that push. Right. Okay, slowly inching forward here. The Terran's now coming out, and Protoss is going to have to do their very best to fight back efficiently. Now, you want to try to clear out as many tanks as you can. Oh, I was going to say, pulling away seemed almost premature. Uh, he needs more Dragoons in his army. He has, like, four Dragoons. You need about 12 to 20 Dragoons. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. rest are Zealots. Totally. And, um, you know, a shuttle uh, in there is nice. Basically, you send everything in, and the Zealots have kind of a funny role because... They end up soaking up damage from the siege tanks, and because they're hitting vultures and other tanks, that damage actually kills the tanks mm. and the vultures. And you basically run that in there until there's no more zealots, and then you turn back around with your troops. Yeah. Yeah, that's generally how it's done, but it looks like Bess is just so heavy on zealots right now. Yeah. It's kind of funny to look at. You know, obviously, he's spending a lot of gas on High Templars and Arbiters, but he still right. has quite a bank, so definitely would like to see more Dragoons added in. Now, JYJ is starting to push towards... Best main base. And this is going to be the important part of the game, I think, right? Oh, can he just... Yeah, you can just fly in there and recall. It's yeah, no, there's no. no mines, there's one tank. Yeah, he'll get the recall off, no problem. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of waiting for this moment to happen, but I feel like this moment should have happened a long time ago. He definitely had more opportunities to kill um, that. But now that the army's across the map, he is pushing forward here. And, uh, okay, I guess that bottom left is still okay. There's... You know what you said about not having enough Dragoons? Both those command centers are likely to live from 3 o'clock, whereas if you actually have yeah. a normal amount of Dragoons, they both die. No, you, you need enough Dragoons in those recalls because mm -hmm. you really want to target that command center. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's basically the best target If you kill area. command centers, especially if, like, they built an extra one there and you get both of them, yeah. that can actually end the game for Terran because oh, yeah. it pick up the economy by two bases. Uh, and so now we're watching, uh, you know, these uh, this base get wiped out. Terran does have a mineral only, but there's a real uh, crisis happening here on this side of the map, and that's that there's no way to get these units out until the Protoss has broken this. So Protoss needs to either hit from another side uh, or, or, or do something. Now, the recalled army was not actually killed off, so it basically killed its, its target and then mm -hmm. left. Yeah. Another kind of painful moment there for JYJ, but you know what? He's chasing down some of these High Templars. He's picking off what he can. Uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I that's almost had to do a double take there. I didn't understand what went down. He actually stasis the the, uh, the vessel and the zealots. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the goal here is to kill as many of the tanks as possible. The tanks are by far the best unit that Terran has in the matchup. Mm -hmm. um, and if JYJ does this correctly, he'll actually basically contain the Protoss. Protoss has not broken free yet outside of his main. Oh, the storms. Ooh. There's three storms here. He doesn't get any of them off. No, That's doesn't. too bad. And he is going to clear the tanks that killed his natural, so his main army can come out now. I think this is the beginning of the end for JYJ. Losing three was bad, but now that he doesn't have the units contained, yeah. his tanks that are on the middle of the map can just be killed at best win. Yeah, and it's funny. The, the starting build for the two sides in this game rippled through the entire rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Nexus on 12, if it goes unpunished, really puts the Protoss in a good position. But I think uh, JYJ didn't do anything particularly extraordinary or strong in this game. He kind of played safe, took a uh, third base late. Yeah. Uh, pushed extremely late. And honestly, from a Protoss' perspective, you kind of want that. Yeah. Well, the like, thing is, Best also kind of forced that. Like you said, it rippled yeah. through. He went Nexus first. It didn't get punished. He went for a safe build directly into Arbiter. And it, there isn't a timing, right? Like, JYJ pushed him at the first available opportunity. But then there was the recall that killed 3 o'clock. And... I mean, JYJ just could not hold on at that point. Yeah, I mean, there just isn't that much you can do. So uh, that's going to be it for the first game. Um, Best takes uh, that pretty pretty impressively, to be totally honest with you. I mean, he really uh, had a commanding performance through the entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the best of three. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would have loved it if JYJ had actually scouted uh, in the end pattern going from bottom right to top left. He could have yeah. ended up rushing that Nexus first. I think the game would have looked very different. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes that's just how it goes. You get some sort of read or something where you think that they might be somewhere else, and uh, you miss that. So, best winning game one in a pretty pretty dominant way didn't seem like there was ever a moment where he was actually in serious trouble yeah i mean this seems pretty expected to be totally honest mm -hmm. with you um so i mean yeah we're gonna go to ascension now for uh map two ascension another great map here is best gonna open the same way he could but i think probably not yeah, no, I don't. I don't think it'll be a Nexus first. I, but yeah, Ascension is actually not a bad map for Nexus first at all. Uh, who knows what JYJ will end up doing? I think that this one it plays very different from Polypoid. So I agree. There's there's a big range of, of builds and strategies that can be utilized here. Timing pushes uh, to that high ground area. If you gain that as Terran, Protoss is in trouble. This is going to be a fun one. JYJ, I think, can take this. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to see a you know, better game all around. Um, the question I'm asking is, how much longer is that Hot 6 logo going to stay on that jacket? I am getting stressed out. <laughs> Don't put that in the wash. It's already missing whatever the logo is below that. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we're ready. We're going to go to game two on Ascension. JYJ versus Best continues on. All right, up in the top center, our Terran player down a game. It's JYJ. And on the right side of the map, we have Best. So, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I have casted, observed, and played that exact game many, many times. Oh, that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what a lot of PVTs look like as the Terran slowly fizzles out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a funny matchup. You know, from the Protoss' perspective, I think in the game itself, it is the most macro-intensive matchup, I think, in the entire game. Yeah. The amount that Protoss can grow mm -hmm. and and, and um, just, the sheer just, amount of just units get out, out of hand. Yeah, I mean, the amount of units you're producing, it's a, it's a funny matchup uh, in, in how it works in, in that regard. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Protoss has to be stopped by the Terran or the Protoss will just get out of control. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going on now into a game uh, two here. I, uh, I I do want to see how this is going to pan out. Um, you know, on four player maps, a lot of times we talk about the other main being taken. It's also true on the three player maps. Mm -hmm. You know, basically a Protoss can just get the other two mains and, and get 
or the other main, I should say, and just get gateways at both. That's kind of the the best way to end it mm -hmm. in, in a macro position is oh, Terran sure. can't push two locations at once. Yeah, it, it gets very, very difficult. You saw JYJ actually trying that, trying to keep some sort of containment up at the right. main and then also push other bases, and he just could not quite do it. Uh, you're really you're really stretched thin at that point. Uh, but, yeah, this, this map definitely plays a bit different. I think walking around with a huge army in this map is pretty good for Terran because if you look at the layout... Right above the third base, you have this high ground, and it's above the fourth, right. the regular fourth as well. So if you take control of that, uh, siege tanks kind of dominate everything. They they dominate the rally point, they dominate the third, they dominate the fourth. So yeah. you can you can kind of choke them out very quickly from that position, and then send what you need to other locations on the map. So. In this game, we have the Protoss going for, you know, the gateway, getting the um, Dragoon range here. We have no idea what kind of game is going to come here from this just so far. Mm -hmm. uh, Terran had two in gas, uh, and I think now just has one in gas, if I've seen that correctly. But yeah. all very standard builds. These are basically the starting points that allow you to branch out into all these different ways that the matchup can be played. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're now, now you like, talk, Artosis. Well, <laughs> the way that you said played, I was like, oh, played. he's going to bring that into something. But No, I just looked at you and I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. There's nothing to say here. <laughs> Got to wait till the Cybernex core is done. Got to see what the tech is. <laughs> Remember PVZ, StarCraft 2, man. It's, you just yeah. got to, It's you know, th this Some is. Some early games are better than others, guys. Yeah, yeah. It, well, this is this standard of this matchup, right? And it's like the it's the standard without the zealot. If there's a zealot out, you already have some action at this point, but here it's like, well, you make the goon and guess what? JYJ will either have a bunker or three marines, so the goon can't do anything right now. But it's basically about getting down your your nexus and your command center or right. if you're going to do something cheesy hiding that right now. Right. So this is going to be nexus on 21, mm -hmm. uh, which is surprisingly the best against any kind of rush. You'd think it would be weak because you're getting a Nexus very quickly. Mm -hmm. But uh, that extra supply you get from that, and you squeeze out a couple more Dragoons, and you're pretty safe. You're, you're cutting probes here and there to try yeah. to get things yeah. out. But uh, it's a very safe way to play. Yeah, it's kind of a funny thing. That's It feels a bit non-intuitive that the quicker you take your expansion, actually, the better you end up holding things, except for the very fastest rushes, right? Yeah, only those the will, most extreme rushes yeah. can punish it. Yeah. Uh, so, SCV trying to poke in here. He knows. He knows there's an Nexus there. Even if you don't, like, 100% see it, uh, you, like, even just seeing the pile in there, this would be the most complex mind game ever, and he'd probably be scratching his head, like, oh, did he see the Nexus there? It was really close. Uh, either way, I believe we have mines on the way here for JYJ, which okay. is, this is, like, uh, Terran's favorite opener. If you have one of these games where there's no real pressure on you and you can go mines first... This allows you to do so much as Terran. You yeah. can you can do anything you want with it. Like see here, he's throwing down a starport because you have all this extra money. It's very easy to just make the vultures, lay the mines. You feel very safe because they literally can't get to you without going through the mines. Right. So it, like the observer is not really out until six minutes normally. You have all this extra time and uh, information as well. And uh, it's going to be a starport out on the middle of the map here. And this could absolutely surprise Bast. Yeah. You know, the Observer is going to be out in a little bit here. Um, and, and basically, you send the Observer on. You may have it make a beeline towards the, the Terran. You want to, first of all, have it go through any rush paths so that you can see, oh, okay, so he's just rushing me now. Then you send mm -hmm. the Observer back and help uh, defend. But if not, then you go from there into the main, uh, take a look at what they have. And the thing is, he's not going to see the uh, the starport. Dude, that's the sickest fake out I've ever seen. Yeah. It, Those no, three Marines. Oh, yeah. You would never, like, that would never be a good move. The only time you would ever have Marines attacking right now is if tanks were with them. Right. So he pulled, like, way back. <laughs> now, if you've been watching mostly us casting StarCraft 2, you've probably seen a million games like this. And you might be asking yourself, is this kind of the same idea? Like, they put it out here, and if they don't see it, they're just not ready for it? Yeah. We don't see this used anywhere near as much as StarCraft 1. Mm. Um, in part because like that starport is very important later. Um, things are a little bit more valuable in general in StarCraft 1, if that makes sense. Mm. Uh, stuff like a starport, like you, it's 
really bad if you were to lose that. But the uh, the the strength of this rush is going to be very similar to a lot of these uh, kind of Hellion drops you'd see here in StarCraft uh, 2. Yeah, and if he doesn't have any goons in his main, this can be a game-winning move oh, for yeah. JYJ. If yeah. he, like, it looks like he's going to get a lot of probes. Best is pushing across the map right now with those goons, and he doesn't have anything in his main. Couple speed vultures running by... And here he goes. He goes up towards the bunker, but like you, I'm sure he's making a tank right now, and you could just repair that, or you can let it die and uh, just try to micro it against the probe. So this is the one thing that can really go wrong, right? Best pushes forward during all this and just kind of attack moves through a bunker and tanks, but he is losing probes. Yeah, it's kind of crazy on both sides here, right? Like um, the, the vultures are killing a ton of workers, but there's actually just nothing to defend here. Let's also remember that there is a Reaver that should be uh, coming out in a second here. But I don't see any Dragoons to fight these Vultures, and these Vultures can kill all these probes if they're microed correctly. Mm. The problem is there are fires on both sides that need to be put out. And you can see there's a, a, a dance going back and forth for who's that got time to micro what. That tank falling is bad news. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I think that Siege Mode being upgraded yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, 100%. And I think that although the damage that uh, was dealt to Best is, is, is extremely difficult to recover from, this is too much here for the Terran. This actually can't be stopped, unlike the Vultures. So Best just wins that game. Yeah, and, and JYJ misprioritized. He oh, was yeah. laying mines and microing Vultures. He had to repair the bunker. Yeah. That was at the actual most That's crucial thing was him you have not to dying. Is, because is, he's going to get damaged to the vultures no matter what. But he literally died because he did not repair the bunker. If you just repair... He has three marines in there. He has a mine behind it. He has a tank out. If you repair the bunker, you're way ahead. Yeah, and if you don't... You die. There's just... <laughs> the Dragoons are literally just too good mm -hmm. at fighting Terran units one by one. Especially when you have five like that. Yeah. The magic number is four. Five even better. Mm. Um, and so Best wins. Best is going to be going on to the finals here of our, our little mini tournament, uh, which is all, again, a fight over uh, who's going to take Larva's spot. That's right. And uh, Best may be the front runner for that now. All right. Our next match going to be Snow against Rush. But first, I believe we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We're going to be right back. What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming back. Uh, thank you for waiting. Uh, it's time to go to Snow versus Rush. We saw Best just smash JYJ. The games are good, but mm -hmm. uh, as we get further away from them, you know, the more I think about them, I mean, Best just crushed, man. Yeah, he, he did. just garbage compacted JYJ. I think this should be a better match. Uh, yeah, yeah. Overall, well, Rush is most people consider him the second best Terran in the world right now, so. Uh, we'll see what he's able to pull off. I, I think he's um, he's like a, kind of like a slightly more modern version of Light or something. He's got great mechanics and everything, but he also has like some very sharp aggression and very good um, optimizations against Protoss. So I'm excited to see if he can take down this monster in Snow. Yeah, I mean the thing about Snow is he is he is so good. Uh, at, at destroying Terrans. I mean, this is the guy that actually beat Flash in the best of five before when Flash was playing Terran. Mm -hmm. um, he really seems to know all the ins and outs, and he's very nuanced. It, 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 uh, not just with, like, Reaver control, but in general, he seems to really see the weakness in how Terran move. I mean, as an example, Snow will always drop a Reaver in between tank shots. Yeah, yeah. He'll know exactly. Like, he'll see it Siege Mode starting, and he'll know if he drops it at this exact moment. He can have the Reaver fire before the Siege Mode animation's finished and fire yeah, back. Yeah. And you really don't see a lot of other people doing that. You don't really see Best do it. You don't really see Mini do it. You don't really see Pisha Dude. do it. it, it there's something about mm. uh, Snow where he just sort of sees more inside the game as far as what the Terran is weak in than I think any other uh, Protoss player. Mm -hmm. You know? No, I would agree. So, well, let's see how it goes. We're going to go to Ascension for map one. Ooh, here we go. Whoa. Ooh, 
love their actual IDs that they play on Battle.net with. You can see those down at the bottom. Yeah. If you play a warm-up game before going on LAN, it shows it. One's a barcode, the other one's a bunch of numbers. <laughs> like, wow, you guys are so original yeah. and so cool that yeah. you smurf each other with your barcodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Snow in the bottom left. We have Rush in the bottom right. And this will certainly be a, a better series, I think, than the JYJ one. I, I mean, he so. got caught off guard a little bit with the Nexus first in game one. And then game two, obviously, he didn't repair his bunker, and that's it. So I'm expecting a bit more here out of Rush as far as Snow. Hopefully, at about 23 minutes, he's still making Reavers and using them with Arbiters to pick stuff off because that's, that's Snow. Yeah, Snow really showed that the Reaver can be used the entire uh, game. Um, I mean, he's he's really just an inspirational player, I think, to a lot of people that are studying PvT because he he really seems to know what you can and can't get away with. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Snow has gone carriers before, but I feel like if you think of Snow, you don't think of carriers. If you think of Stork, you think, yeah, sure, carriers. Yeah, okay, um, I see what you mean, yeah. But it, it does seem like he's much more about the speed shuttles, getting Arbiters, mm -hmm. kind of your ground and pound Protoss. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, I can't. I can't completely disagree. Even though uh, I think carriers, he's good with them, and they fit with Reaver builds, generally speaking, quite well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we'll see what he wants to go for because there's there's all sorts of new uh, PVT styles, and you kind of alluded to it at the beginning. Uh, like for instance, there's a style of Protoss vs. Terran right now where you go double Robo, and you get Reaver damage upgrades, and it's yeah. incredibly powerful. It's so frustrating to play against, and for people that don't know, like you can get an upgrade on the Reaver that makes it plus 25 damage per Scarab, so it's 125 damage. Yeah, a lot of people might not know that either. Yeah, There's no, a that's... couple upgrades in this game that we don't really talk about because they're not used. Yeah. Well, it's super good against Terran. Uh, when you drop off two Reavers in a base, it now just takes two volleys to kill four depots. It's amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. I didn't think about you that. You have no idea how many oh, I was always graveyards of four depots appear in my base every game now. Oh, that's... Okay, that's so funny. You just blew my mind there, because I was thinking basically about, uh, <laughs> uh... About, like, okay, well, that's more damage to a tank. The tank will have, like, 25 <laughs> points. And, like, oh, okay. This, yeah. The, yeah, the Scarab no, it's uh, what, just it, destroys the Vulture no matter what. But, I mean, damage is damage. You literally just right-click on the depots. <laughs> and you, you super supply block. Imagine losing four depots in... Like 10 seconds. When they do the double robo play, yeah. I've been meaning to research this more, but I haven't had uh, any time. Like, they do it on three base or they do it on two base or, or what? What's the deal? Uh, yeah, you go like Reaver three base, then you stay on three base and go for it. But the thing is with, with Snow, like, I don't think that that's very likely something he'll do. He's so finesse driven. He doesn't just ape his way in with shuttles. Yeah, he definitely doesn't ape his way in, for mm -hmm. sure. He, he really likes to play basically a game where he's uh, rapidly developing on his side of the map, but mm -hmm. he's winning like a fencing match with his Reaver on the other yeah. side. He's he's um, basically fighting the Terran constantly while building a very, very powerful economy behind this. And there's a lot of things Protoss can do to just kind of uh, you know, barbarian their way through the game mm -hmm. and, and try to kill Terran. Terran has a lot of weak points early on, but you don't have to play that way. Uh, and sometimes I think it's actually almost better not to. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't deny what you're saying. Uh, by the way, this is a Nexus first build here from Snow into Two Gate. Uh, Rush scouted him second. And this map, it's a little bit hard to pull off the Marine SCV Vulture. Mm -hmm. Uh so he opted not to do that. Instead, he's going quick starport in his main base. So kind of the same idea we saw from JYJ. Is it going to pay off here for for Rush? Whereas with JYJ, he just like kind of died to the counter. So the Dragoon's going to just chase down this SCV. There's still a lot of tech you're trying to find while you're inside this base here. You know, we don't see the Robo yet. We don't see a Stargate. We don't see a Citadel. Uh, so it's not very clear what the tech choice is, and that's why he's waiting for that SCV to be killed off. Uh, yeah, he'll throw down a robo now. Yeah. If that probe will ever move. Yeah, if the probe stops having a seizure over there. <laughs> um, yeah, the robo is absolutely the most standard way to play, but you do see games where occasionally they'll just go straight into Arbiter. 
oh, and just God. try to like Those basically are cut. weird games. Yeah, I, I think it's actually not very advisable. No, it's not. But it is a weird thing that can throw the Terran off. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at this level, generally, you're going to see that uh, Robo pretty quickly. It's just It's got so much flexibility to it. Reaver, Observer, just shuttles in general. Uh, and, of course, with Snow, that is his superpower as a Reaver, so generally what he wants to go for. Now, with that shuttle finishing up, we'll see if he goes Observatory or Reaver Tech first. I imagine it'll be one or the other. The uh, dropship is going to be on its way. Already well-placed mines all over the place, and notice how he's made them in a kind of a fanning uh, arc outside the Protoss base. This is going to give him some room to fly the dropship up. It's not going to be seen. Will Snow be in position to stop this? Yeah, that's the big question here. Snow now getting that third gateway up. So very steady uh, pacing here uh, from Snow overall. That gateway, uh, I'm sorry, that dropship is coming here. This is always a great time to try to drop mm -hmm. uh, the, the Protoss. They, they really are weak in this moment. They don't, they're, they're afraid enough of pushes that sometimes they neglect their main. Yeah, and he actually has no vision even up here. So Rush is about to murder his economy. Yeah, this is going to be an insane insane amount of damage coming out here. Mines being planted as well. And oh he's done a great God. job of pushing the mines together so that you can't really just micro forward and Dude. take them on. And also the probes end up getting stuck. They're kind of snaking around the gateways here. He killed so many probes there. This yeah. is terrible right now for Snow. And it's actually getting a little bit worse here. He's going to get a few more kills. And this is basically the moment the Protoss is the weakest. Is, is this little period of time where they don't actually have a whole bunch of bases, a whole bunch of Dragoons. Even if the Vultures... Oh, God. <laughs> this is a weird problem on some maps where the, yeah. the workers get stuck and they kind of start to do this like weird centipede uh, ant farm move yeah, through yeah. there. The right base on Neo Sylphid, man. Every game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at the redrop here in the corner. Beautifully executed here by Rush. Gets back in there. Dude, Rush is so far ahead right okay, now. So, I, mean, I don't know how much more damage that Snow can sustain and actually be uh, a, a real threat here. Well, I think there's like, what, 10 probes mining right now? Um, he, he actually uh, killed, like, I want to say 15 probes. I think so, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it might have even been a little bit more than that. But that one Vulture at the end had 10 kills itself. Insane, yeah. insane, insane damage. And now Rush can kind of get into everything from here. He's going to have his upgrades going. He's going to go into scans, get some missile turrets up. Uh, you know, Snow is making a Nexus, which is what you kind of need to do. Like, it's too obvious and too weak to do some sort of just all-in push from here. So he's going to just try to rebuild his economy and go forward. He's going to have to fight a, a real uphill uh, fight from here. And, I mean, he has done no damage to the Terran. So that drop just went brilliantly, and I love the fact that he then takes the vultures back out, fakes, mm. leaving, and then drops in there two more times. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to see carrier tech. Now, I always feel like carrier tech in this moment is extremely risky because you've lost a bunch of workers. Mm -hmm. You don't have the kind of backing, but, you know, it may pay off. There's a chance that we have the Terran uh, really play a slow um, uh game take a third and quietly behind that snow will just muster some carriers and maybe yeah. come back yeah it's kind of a common thing for high level protosses to against dropship openers go for carrier uh but yeah we'll see we'll see if it works out after the amount of probes he lost because look he's even losing some more there oops uh <laughs> runs into the scarab and a nice pickup there as well but rush has just kept the pressure on he's done so much good harassment thus far I mean, their supplies are even after a Nexus first. So that that really kind of tells you the type of situation Snow is in at the moment. Uh, these vultures coming down here and just decimating these probes. I mean, really, we're getting to the point where you can't lose any more workers and have any viability here. I mean, the game is straightforward enough, uh, even though this is probably the most complex you know game ever made. Like, this much we do know is that you need workers. Mm -hmm. You, you, you do, you can't be functional off of a small amount of workers and have any kind of uh, depth strategically mm -hmm. against somebody who's just able to produce at a pro gamer level. And now he got the scan off. Only one Stargate was actually producing there. Yeah. And you need, you basically need like at least four carriers before you can really do anything. Yeah, for sure. Um, and carriers take an extremely long amount of time to make. So it's, you know... It's looking pretty grim here for uh, uh, for Snow. 
Now, uh, the Wraith is out to kind of block the Reaver tech, and there's a good amount of factories. He's up at, I want to say he's made six facts now. So I think we're going to see just a two-base push from Rush, which I think is, like, the perfect situation. You already hurt Snow's economy so much, he's going to carriers. Like, all he really has to slow you down is that Reaver. Okay, beautifully done. The Terran is just kind of sitting back. I'm sorry, there's no third CC at all, right? No, no. I didn't see one. Yeah, I generally, if you fight against someone that's going carriers at this speed, you want to just do an attack immediately. I guess that makes sense. You just sit on it and, and, and try yeah. to overpower them. Carriers, like, scale probably better than everything else in the game. So sure. you definitely, you just, you don't ever want them to get to six carriers, basically. At six, it becomes out of hand for Terran a lot of the time. Okay, he's beginning to push up now. Yeah, he's just got to carefully get onto the high ground here. Nice volley there. Onto the Wraith, pushes it back. The Observer kind of spotting here for those Reavers. Snow being very careful. He needs to buy as much time as is possible. And look, this is... Oh, the, actually, the Vultures tank the, the Reaver hits, which is really important there, because this is the type of situation where Snow will just pick off so many tanks on your way over. Ooh, drops one Reaver, though. Mm. And that that's a real problem here, because the only thing that can maybe make the math a little bit fuzzier here would be uh, Reaver shots, and he's lost both of those. Oh, um, The no. Vultures are killing these probes. I don't think this game's going to go on for much longer. I, I don't think that there's... Oh, wow. Actually, Snow's pretty insane. He does have Dragoons there on high ground. So <laughs> picks off a few tanks, I runs back. But the amount of probes that he's losing, his economy is garbage here. Garbage. Garbage. <laughs> it's, it's, it's garbage. It's not recycling. It's garbage. Garbage. You go straight in the trash can. Uh, he's actually kind of crazy. I don't really appreciate how the high ground, low ground situation on this map. It's, uh, it's yeah. not self-evident when you're looking at it, but uh, you're right. Yeah. This is high ground, low ground. Yeah, the gray areas are like ramp. And the bl the light blue is the high ground. So. Yeah. Um, but he does manage to chase that. Oh! Oh! oh my God! Walk north just a little bit. This is brutal. Yeah. Snow's dead, man. There, yeah, no, he's there's just th th there's... This, this game should be over. We should be going into the next game in a second mm -hmm. here. So here are the two carriers, and the problem is, is that with two carriers. The Goliaths can just kill the Interceptors. Oh, yeah. And once they kill the Interceptors, there's, there's nothing you can do. Hey, the, the Interceptors are barely even going to do damage here. And he's got so many Goliaths. Like, the Goliaths themselves might win this game. And then he's got tanks with them as well. So the ground army obviously going to be cleaned up very, very quickly. Down goes the Reaver. Snow should be GGing here uh, as soon as he loses this army. Yeah, he's coming forward with some more tanks and Goliaths. But uh, Rush has got some great control in general here. He's kind of pulling back and... Um, I, I will say it's kind of insane that Snow is even fighting this game out at all, mm. considering how much of a beating he's taken. It, it really is. In some ways, I'm almost more impressed with Snow, if that makes any sense here, with uh, like the fact that he's still managing to get anything done at all. Well, he's got four carriers, so like when there's four carriers, there's always a chance for you in the game, right? And like the goons are slowing this down. The carriers are helping him clean it up. Look at that. The reinforcements have mostly been knocked out, but then he flies Ooh. over the Goliaths. Yeah, and one like, goes what? down immediately. Oh, that was oh like the beginning God. of maybe a comeback, but that was that was kind of brutal there, losing that one carrier for free. Yeah, well, he's able to just keep his distance here. Uh, it's three carriers remaining, but it's mostly interceptors being made inside the carriers. The tanks still can't really be dealt with. You want to try to snipe the tanks with the carriers. It's this weird thing where the carriers counter the tanks, and then the Dragoons and Zealots <laughs> counter the Goliaths. Yeah, and this is the normal tactics as well. When you're going fast carrier, generally you just try to get a group of goons in between the rally and like the, the main army that's trying to push you and slow it down like this. But I think Snow just took a bit too much damage. Yeah. I Imagine so. how well he'd be doing if he hadn't lost like 30 probes this oh, game. Oh gosh, he's lost that Nexus as well. Mm. And there's more reinforcements coming here, and only Stork could win from here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, a, a bit of a one-sided game, but definitely Snow showing that he can really take a fight, even when he's behind in mm. kind of every imaginable in-game metric there is. Um, but I, I think, yeah, I think we're almost to the end of this. I think Snow is going to, to tap out, and it's going to be rushed with a 1-0 to zero lead. 
Yeah, which is it's kind of nice to see after JYJ got bodied yeah, by best, right? Like Maybe he can get a TP take some day. Games. Ooh, hopefully. All right, back down to three carriers. Yeah, Snow, like, I mean, kind of just waiting for him to out here because, yeah, he's microing the carriers. He's losing them. He has, like, two goons. Okay, there you there go. There we are. GG. Trust us, guys. It's been done for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you said the game was over before it was really over. No, I didn't. No, we did not. No one has to leave the game. Yeah. So. So, I think Rush probably very happy with that game. Basically, from A to Z, everything went according to plan. Mm -hmm. He played a great um, harass play, developed in a very safe manner, scouted the carriers. Uh, we see him eating a little bit of chocolate there. This is something a lot of pros do to try to keep their energy levels up. A little bit of sugar. Gamers love candy. Gamers <laughs> love... No, but seriously, a lot, yeah. especially in RTS, a lot of people consume a small amount of chocolate in between each game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little sugar boost uh, mm -hmm. can definitely help you out. But when you crash tasteless, get lethargic oh, oh. in that late game. That's oh. right. Oh, when you my. see them cut the map in half and yeah. you're coming off of that sugar. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a tough one. All right, so Rush with the advantage right now. I believe Eclipse is our second map, if I'm not mistaken um, here. I think you're right. And, okay, so, like, Eclipse coming up as the second map is definitely going to be a very different game. Oh, no, it's Polypoid. Poly <laughs> I'll just shut well, my dirty says, mouth. It says Eclipse. Yeah. I don't understand. All right, well. Maybe they hosted the wrong map and we have to restart. Or maybe they hosted the wrong graphic. Yeah, and we don't have to do anything but be confused by that production mistake. So I wasn't wrong. They did say Eclipse, but it was Polypoid. Uh, okay, so, I mean, Polypoid is very, very standard. Yeah, I mean, Polypoid, uh, look, we've casted so many games on this map. I think it makes for a great map PVT. I like that there's so many different ways the game can be played. Yeah, well, I mean, Polypoid is, I mean... Uh, Wait, are you talking about Polyport or Eclipse? Polyport. Oh, okay. Because when you said, like, so many ways it can be played on Eclipse, I'm like, well, for one side, yes. <laughs> no, for Protoss, there's a lot you can do. For me, Terran I have to make like, a lot of Marines to hold off the Zealots and the Gas. Don't take a third base. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Polypoid is, is so super flexible and everything. It's such a fun map to play, and uh, it really does run the full gamut of absolutely everything. Uh, that that you can see in the matchup, whether it's the Nexus first play, you can do proxies, you can play very aggressively or have a split map situation. And uh, you know we gotta wait and see. Uh oh, hey. I think I think you are they figuring been out right? that Eclipse yeah. was supposed to be the map? Is that what's going on? I, th I think Is that's that why probably what you guys happened. get to see that I like slip all the way right. down here. <laughs> oh man, our posture when we cast is pretty bad. Yeah, well, people don't understand. Actually, I'm basically an earthworm. Yeah, you are kind of earth, Dan. Earthworm Dan. I kind <laughs> yeah. of see like your little spaceman outfit. Yeah. But you have your little artosis head coming out of the helmet. Um, if you ever wonder why I lose so many TVPs, it's because I don't have arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess this issue is going to get resolved. I don't know how you want to deal with this. I don't know. Uh, do we just cut straight to it, or do we keep talking, or what? I don't know. I guess we'll see how this goes. Like because we have to, maybe we, we jump back into the game and we just play Polypoid. Yeah, because uh, we don't look at the VODs ahead of time because we want this to be like the live experience for us as well. Uh, we didn't know this was, this was going to happen. So yeah, here yeah. we are. Well, I'm just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll get into it. But guys, why don't you uh, take this moment and pat yourselves on the back if you've supported the Patreon ASL? Yeah, Patreon or Patreon dot com. com forward slash ASL English. Yes. Uh, if you don't support us already, and and uh, we really hope you do. We hope we can convince you to <laughs> to do that. I know. Uh, you know, we both listen to a lot of podcasts. Everybody's got a Patreon. Sometimes it takes a while to get somebody to actually get on the mm. uh, service. And, and, and okay, we're gonna go to this map eclipse. Um, so, anyways, guys, if you want to support us and, and what we're doing here, uh, the best way to do that is to go to that Patreon. Yeah. Anyways, we're gonna be on Eclipse now. Okay, I'm actually glad I didn't want to cast another game on Polypoid. I like the the rotation of yeah, the maps. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. So clearly. Uh, Either the players and the uh, in-game observer hosted the wrong map, and we just now found out that actually this had to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So we're going on to Eclipse. Again, Rush has a 1-0 to zero lead. 
Um, I do feel like this is a tougher map for Terran. Mm -hmm. There's only one way you can grow on the map, and that is to, to, to fill in towards the top left, whether you're bottom yeah. left or top right. You have to kind of grow in that direction. Mm -hmm. The two bottom right bases are really just not realistically holdable for Terran. Yeah. You, you do get weird games where sometimes a Terran gets it, but... Um, you know, the way the matchup really works, it's not a very good No, no, it's spot. it's really hard to actually defend those uh, yeah. as Terran. It's mostly about cleaning those up, in fact. Uh, and, of course, you know, this is a map where you, as Protoss, you get a lot of choices. Like, you can proxy gate very easily because it's a two-player map. Mm -hmm. You can steal gas. Uh, you can you can be as aggressive or non-aggressive as you want. You can play it as a completely standard map. You can go Nexus first, right? There's all these different options. Uh, now Snow's going to come up. He's going to steal the gas, and of course, this kind of like railroads rush into a very specific direction. Yeah, I mean, stopping the gas ultimately stops, or at least curbs, a lot of the options here for Terran. Mm -hmm. And it really gives the Protoss a, a pretty incredible amount of control over the game. Uh, it is completely winnable uh, from the Terran's position. It's, it's not impossible to recover from, but... You know, so much of StarCraft is about trying to know what they can do ahead of time. And when you take the gas, and you also know when they're going to retake the gas, because you know when they kill it, too. Totally, it's, yeah. it's sort of automatically scouting for you in that moment. And and you, I learned something actually recently, Tasteless, yeah. which threw me off, and I actually lost a game because of it. An assimilator has more vision than a refinery or an extractor. Oh, that's so So you actually weird. you have to take that into consideration, because however far away you think it can see it can actually see a little bit further oh, so if this you're trying would to actually cheese, explain a lot of weird things that have happened in my games where i'm like why would he make that there yeah i can see his command yeah. center i can see his second yeah, so I'm yeah like well that's just stupid i, I wasn't aware but like who it, told you that how did you figure that well out? i figured it out because i built a barracks that he could see and then i canceled it when the probe left my base, because I thought the oh, assimilator yeah, was yeah, it, but yeah, the assimilator yeah. barely saw it, and I was like, what? So what is the vision range then on it? Oh, it's it, actually all Protoss buildings have higher vision range than their counterparts of the other races for whatever reason. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of wild. That's kinda wild. so weird. Isn't it? Hmm. The more you know. I feel like we know almost everything from a caster perspective, but this is like a moment where I will never forget this, and this is forever changing the way I think about stuff. That's <laughs> yeah. just wild. Um. And so, probes have one more vision than uh, SCVs and drones, too. That's insane. I would yeah. have always assumed it was all the same. Me, too. Like, when they make the game, it all would right. all just be there. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is a uh, command center. Yeah, this is into, this is uh, how you want to do it, generally. Yeah. Is if they steal your gas, you go for a gasless expand. They're, like, it's way too long to kill the geyser. Make the geyser, mine the gas, get the factory, have the factory complete, get the machine right. shop, all that. You have to jump your economy forward. So this is, like, basically every Terran, this is how you counter this. Of course, uh, on Snow's side, at the high levels, how Protoss uh, plays against this, you steal the gas, and then you just go for your own Nexus, generally. Usually, yeah. Yeah, um, that, that's... The idea is you're just sort of eliminating a lot of options. Hopefully, from the Protoss' side, you can stop them from getting on their low ground. Then you're in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see right now, in, in this case, it's it's not going to work. Now, the SCV wants to scout really, really badly. But with the uh, Zealot there, can't quite do it. A Robo is coming up super quick here. So, no doubt it's going to be a fast Reaver drop. Oh, for sure. Uh, get that Reaver out and just see, you know, how much is the Terran actually going to respect him here? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not that hard uh, if they don't have turrets up everywhere to just start to punish. Yeah. Uh, now, a lot of games on this map at high levels tend to go into speed shuttle uh, dive bombing areas because it's really hard for the Terran to actually get their third base up. Mm -hmm. And so speed shuttle kind of plays into that. Yeah, and uh, just slowing them down as they try to push in their third base is so powerful. It's something that we've actually seen Snow do a lot. Like, for instance, last yeah. season of ASL, uh, he got behind on this map against Scan and then just kind of utilized his Reavers, leapfrogging back and back and back and just right. slowing down Terran from taking anything. So I'm very excited to see how Rush is going to deal with how Snow plays this map. So the Robo support bay is coming here. Um, we don't see what... You know, Terran has yet to hold this. The, the Reaver drop's still a ways out, but mm -hmm. 
it looks like what he wants to do is get the comm stat up, scan, see what the tech is, and then react. And I think yeah. there's going to be enough time in here that he can scan. I don't believe the robo uh, tech is actually that hidden at all. No, no, he'll be able to figure out what's going on as soon as he scans that main base. Uh, he didn't make an eBay, which makes me just a tad nervous. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you saw an, an eBay somewhere. No. I, I did not. So there's the, now he's going to know exactly what's coming. And he sees the Citadel as well. So that tells him that either we're going to see storm drops with this or a very quick Arbiter follow-up. Right. So generally, Snow likes the Arbiter follow-up, but we'll see. Yeah, the Arbiter's so strong. Um, so this shuttle's coming here now. Uh, there should be, I think, a Reaver and maybe a Dragoon, maybe a Zealot actually in here as well. Coming right up. I think it actually doesn't have the Reaver yet. Oh, really? He's yeah, I think it was a. It? I think it was a scout shuttle. Okay, whenever I see stuff like this, I feel like this is wrong, and you're not supposed to play like this. But it's snow, so. Well, he did scan him. So if you scan and see the Reaver tech anyways, uh, then okay. it's okay. Like you're not going to hit with your Reaver at the earliest possible time because your shuttle has to go back. But I think the maybe scouting's maybe. okay because your observer is very, very late here. Also, you probably, or, or, I guess you're getting shuttle speed when you do this, right? Probably, I think. So maybe you don't want to really engage until you have that. Honestly, a shuttle is so much worse without shuttle speed. Yeah. Especially when Goliaths are there. And if you end up losing the shuttle and the Reaver, you're kind of totally screwed. Mm -hmm. So let's see if this actually maths out. Maybe he scouts with the shuttle. And then as shuttle speed finishes, he comes up here and kind of tries to navigate that little area. Mm -hmm. Now turrets starting to go up here for Rush. He's got some good production going. Of course, uh, Snow does have his third base uh, going up. Here comes that Reaver. Mm, I don't think he can yeah, really he get shouldn't. in right now. Like Rush is nailing like the edge, right? Where like where you can't do anything to him, just barely. Right. Like he has everything exactly in time, which is it's such a hard line to hit. But I feel like he's hitting it magnificently. Yeah, but Snow cutting corners pretty perfectly here as well. Neither side can attack into the other one. Mm -hmm. They just barely both have enough. Um, now what, what we're going to see here is the contain. He may drop. We'll see. Uh, but more importantly, he's going to make sure that the, the Terran can't get a third base mm -hmm. um, while the, the Protoss is going to sit on three bases. And that doesn't mean Terran's behind for now. This is fine. But eventually, you need to get another base up here. I can't believe that finished in between volleys, the range attack to kill that. Observer. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, you, you're you're very right. Like, they can't really do too much against each other. Rush is going to start pushing out because it is a long process against Snow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Snow really messed that up. He almost lost the shuttle, and he did lose the Reaver. That's not very Snow-like. No, I... This is not the snow I'm used to casting, to be totally honest with you. He just murders that uh, Reaver, and, and, and now it's just a couple Dragoons and, and, and a Protoss, you know, hoping this Arbiter can get out as quickly as, as possible. Mm -hmm. This is really bad. Yeah, well, he the the speed with which he's taking his third on location at nine minutes is yeah. that's nice in this current meta game to take it on this map at that time. Yeah, Rush has to be feeling pretty good about himself here. I mean, he's he's done a great job with his build. He's kind of nailed everything. Look how spread all his buildings are. He's so afraid of the dive bomb in. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, here comes Snow across the map. He can't actually do anything with these dragons. It's like a light contain. Maybe pick off things on the edge. He's adding a ton of gateways. But really, the Arbiter is going to give him what he needs to actually have options again in this game. I don't know that there's anything Protoss can do to the Terran right now. I feel like these turrets are going to be up. Protoss doesn't have enough to come in there. Oh, you know, this is kind of nice with this little mm, DT. For sure. And, you know, 1DT going down for a tank is actually cost-efficient, believe yeah, it or not. So, but Especially yeah. since you already have that third base up and running. Okay, gonna come in and... Oh, my God. With the this hurt. angle is insane. What? Yeah, they, he actually missed getting the shot off, though, with that Reaver. Trying to get a little bit of damage. Wow, he actually kills some SCVs on this bunker. Only, only Snow would ever try something like that and get away with it. Like, I, I, He's the only player I know that looks at that and goes... Oh, yeah, like I should move in here. I yeah. Mean, keep in mind that if you are... Protoss is more likely to overextend into siege mode in this situation. Like, yeah. siege mode shoots so far, and 
Uh, it, it one siege mode shot is can be devastating to a Protoss army. That the fact that he looks at that with a damaged shuttle and sees one weird little angle he can drop a, a reaver out at and mm -hmm. take a fight and then run away. It That's boggles crazy. the mind. It does. It does. It, it almost makes me wonder, because it's like, is this actually what you should even be thinking about or doing? <laughs> it feels wrong, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, In many he ways. Might, he might have stasis ready. He might be able to just freeze out a chunk of this. Does he have the energy already for stasis oh. here? Let's see. Oh, almost. Yeah, not quite. Nearly. Oh, and he loses that first Arbiter. He loses the Reaver and Shuttle as okay, well. This, this is this is becoming Dude, Rush is much. crushing him. Like, hey, Snow is just overextending everywhere. Yeah, well, I, you know, we've talked about this actually off camera a decent amount, but these Protosses that are, like, so aggro mm -hmm. that they end up just bleeding off their army and it makes it kind of easy for the Terran. Like, yeah. Like, all you have to do is try to not die because they're going to do all that work for you. Yeah, once you've once you've uh, deflected like the first, if you kill the first Arbor and it did nothing, as a Terran you just breathe this huge sigh of relief yeah. because you have such a long period of time before the Arbor is going to be dangerous again that you're going to be just about maxed out. Right. So this is this is a uh, prime time for Rush right now. Like, look, he's adding all of his factories. His upgrades are going fantastically. He's got his full three base economy. Snow does have four base. He has a good gateway count. He's still got the same amount of supply. And it looks like he's going into carriers. Yeah, I, I I mean, I think that's not a bad idea. I just worry that there's been so many little losses here that when we get, you know, to the big picture of where this game's at, yeah. you know, Terran's gonna have plus two attack, plus one armor, and just roll the Protoss. Yeah, if he hadn't been wasteful with the Arbiter and with the Reavers and stuff, I would feel like Snow will easily get into three carriers and six. In this situation, where you've already killed that first Arbiter and you're already feeling pretty good, the Reavers have died and all that. I mean, Rush is in just like a, about two minutes he's going to be maxed out. Right? Yeah, I mean... I mean, this is just getting worse and worse. It's kind of a disappointing day of games here for Snow, to be honest. I mean, and it's not so much that Snow is a bad player. It's like he's just let off these really important units in these moments like like look i mean this is like the anti-snow day like we, we start today out and it's like it's summer well, tasteless there's no whoa. snow in summer <laughs> he he like has lost reavers needlessly in both games mm -hmm. and then lost an arbiter and i mean look sometimes the game can just be that straightforward yeah you know if 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 terran's losing tanks and sets of four throughout the game you kind of go well i mean yeah <laughs> i don't know how you recover from that mm -hmm. and that's kind of what the reaver or the arbiter is you know um yeah, yeah. well it, you know by the time terran is up around 160 protoss should be maxed out unless they've been kind of throwing stuff away so we'll see if snow is going to be okay here like he's kind of defending this fourth base rush is trying to harass he does have his fourth cc up at his third he's added a lot of turrets here as well is he completely aware of the switch into carriers, though? It does not feel that way. Because he's yeah, going to have to start doing uh, some big rounds of Goliaths at this point. This is definitely one way to play when you get to this really insane point economically as Protoss. Is like, do I just set up a carrier switch in here? Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it just catches the Terran off guard. Yeah, you can actually see when you're adding this many turrets, generally, like... While that can be useful against carriers, this is an anti-Arbiter play. Right. Against carriers, anti-carrier play is actually attacking Protoss because you can't let them get too many. Right. Whereas anti-Arbiter is like, well, it's one unit they're committing across the map, so you actually have to have the defense up to stop that. Yeah, I'm actually glad you pointed that out. That's that's one of the easiest ways to think about a, a pretty complex issue in the game is if you see carriers coming, you should just attack. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, there's some exceptions. Well, you, you have to hit, like, your power spikes and everything. But, right. for instance, Snow is going to have six carriers probably before Rush gets there. And against six carriers, you actually need something like 20 Goliaths. Okay, so he knows now for sure. Mm. Okay, all of Rush's factory should be making Goliaths at this point, I think, because he's only got, like, four. Ooh, EMP. Did he dodge it? Ooh, he got it! Nicely done. Oh my god, I'm actually very surprised he got that. That was like, dude, Snow moved it, but I guess in the wrong direction there. Maybe uh, Rush kind of predicted a little bit, but here he goes. He's pushing forward. He knows that his ground army's better, especially after that EMP. And 
And, uh, I mean, the, the ground army is getting wiped. Keep in mind that there's only one source for the gateway. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to kill a Protoss, it really comes down to one specific push. If you can push all the way into this area here um, and start to shell the gateways, you can then fork off little bits of your army and attack these different locations. Look at this. Gets in oh. here. Gets rid of the Reavers already, but there's only two Goliaths here against six carriers. There's so many siege tanks, but they're just going to die to these carriers. Uh, but he is going to be able to wipe out a lot of these probes over here. And the Goliaths are coming. I'm worried that these Goliaths are actually separated too much. Mm -hmm. Well, he. I think he'd rather even a few Goliaths die than as many siege tanks as are going down. But... Like, this went from Rush kind of dominating to being surprised by carriers, and now I don't know which way it's going to go, because, yeah, you killed the Nat, but Snow still has his third, his fourth, and one of the bottom right bases, which are extremely hard to kill when someone's on carrier. Uh, honestly, that went much better for Snow than I expected. I think I didn't have an appreciation for how few Goliaths were truly there. Mm. And this is kind of a crazy hard reset. Oh, gosh, he doesn't know about the space. Yeah. I thought Terran knew about that for sure, but he scanned uh, the the main closer uh, to him. Now he scans those incoming carriers. Keeps an eye on where they're at. Don't forget his upgrades are really, really good. Uh, Snow does already actually have plus two. Hey, nice EMP onto those mm -hmm. carriers. It means you immediately got to whip away. Now, if an EMP hits carriers, when the interceptors come out, do they also not have shields? How does that work? Every time they go back in, they, they get they all their reset. shields back. Yeah. But, I, but I mean, like, if you hit it and there aren't any interceptors out, the first time they come out, do they still have shields? Yeah, they do. Interesting. Okay. But, uh, yeah, look at this. Okay, he's, he's just starting to pick everything off. Snow has nine carriers now. Six right there and three more coming up. And it's getting to that number where your army is going to be, like, two, three groups of uh, uh, Goliaths, and the rest are going to be Siege Tank Vultures. So, let's see. This becomes a lot about maneuvering. Like, notice Snow runs up, does some damage, turns around. He's also setting up the other bottom right base, because that is absolutely what you want to do. Cannons, High Templars, Carriers, you just, you can't really break those bases very easily. Yeah, the, the busted part of this tech is to come here when we get Psy Storm here, because then you treat the Goliaths like they're Hydralisks. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you just storm the areas that they're in, and, you know, they're not that fast moving out. Uh, but Snow also, I think, has tactically the right idea of how to play this part as well. It's all about the counterattack. Mm -hmm. If he can run up and maybe pick off the command center, like at the fourth base, that'd be huge. Yeah, yeah. Any Anytime he can kill a base, that's going to be very hard for Terran to get it back. Now, he is going to lose his fourth base location, but he's already remade his natural, and he does have that other uh, base in the bottom right, so I'm not really that worried about him as of yet. And Carrier's he's... still gaining a lot of value as well. Yeah, he's done a good job, hasn't he? He's basically pushed out and wiped out a few of these, um, you know, these uh, tanks, these individual little locations. Rush has pumped up his supply back to maxing out. Mm -hmm. And I think basically what uh, Snow is going to try to abuse is this circular area at the top left. Mm -hmm. If Terran pushes there, he runs around to the other side yeah. and threatens a counterattack. And, you know, really this is a big distraction because there's also a base mining at the bottom right. Mm. It, it's such a powerful way to play the map. If yeah. you do get those carriers out there, it's really hard to, to pin them down. Snow can kind of run forever as long as he's still mining. Now comes up with the Arbiter as well. Oh, man, a oh, pretty, pretty big one there. Uh, but Rush is doing okay in this fight still. He's really eliminating a lot of the Interceptors. Well, and he needs he needs I, to push Snow off of this location, or he's going to end up losing, I think. Well, the thing is, I think that there's now no longer enough tanks to be a threat. Hmm. The Dragoons don't have to actually respect this at all. Look, yeah, this game, I think, smart. is actually going to be won by Snow. And I got to say, yeah. I could I could not be more impressed. Like, this is wild to me that Terran was this maxed out and then actually pushed in and shut down the natural. And then he plays a game this well. And again, there's enough carriers and enough Dragoons that you win on both sides here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it was kind of a sneaky play here from Snow to switch into the carriers. A lot of times when you see Arbiter play and everything looks normal, you just kind of assume it will continue and you start saving your scans because you need a lot against Arbiters. But Snow utilized that and, and Rush took a long time to recheck the tech. You know, this is, uh, this is something that every Terran in the world messes up sometimes.
Yeah, this is wild to me. This is... Uh, am, am, am I correct? I think we're almost done here. Yeah. I mean, Terran has re remade a lot, but, you know, Terran is a, a thing where if you, like, deflate them a few times, they really can't mm -hmm. get back to the place they were at before. You, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's siege tanks or toothpaste. You lose too many of them, that's going to be that. Yeah, well, you just don't have the kind of power. These Goliaths, imagine there were 20 tanks around them, you know, like mm -hmm. there was earlier in this game. And that's the thing is, each time you see these fights, notice how he doesn't actually fight the Goliaths. He targets a tank and then runs away. Mm -hmm. Well, the tanks are so much more expensive. They take longer to build. Uh, you know, you can only build them in add-ons. It's not something you want to be spending your gas on here as Rush. You've got to build a lot of Goliaths. And he's doing his best on this micro to try to pick off carriers, but Snow's got a lot of upgrades on them, and he's just pulling them back. Siege chain count is not big enough. You, you like, you you have like a very specific window to kill a carrier player, and that's why you still have your your siege tank so that you can actually blow up their land army, and then the Goliaths prove to be too much for the carriers, and that's how you win. Here. The ground army is too much, and the carriers are too much. So we're going to be seeing yeah, a GG in just I a second. I can't believe this game. I mean, again, I, I personally am not that good at carrier micro, but when you see somebody who's, like, really, really, really good at it, mm. it's kind of crazy what you can do with it. This is going to be GG. We're going to go to the third game between these two. Snow, I'll tell you what, a sloppy opener. He lost the tanks. He lost an arbiter, but an insane closer. Mm -hmm. Well... Now it's tied up one to one. Hell yes. Who do you think takes the third game? It's going to be on Polypoid. I feel like Rush is. I do too. I think he's it just. It feels like Rush better. is actually. Yeah. If he had not gotten. Like, if he had just scanned, he wins. Yeah. Right? Because he can just. He can fill in the last 20 of his supply with Goliaths and just attack move. Right. There's no way to hold that for Snow. Snow needed to get a little bit lucky. And he did. He did. And here he is. He's going into map three. Does Snow do something risky, though? Does he feel like Rush well, is ahead of him today? That, that's the thing, man, is there's always the dark side of cheese, right? I mean, you know, every matchup, there's something dirty that can be done. And, and in the matchup PVT, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of ways you can play it, you know? Um, obviously, we have the, the, the uh, two-player map cheeses out of the question, since Polypoid's four Let players. So we can't yeah. have, like, a gas deal or anything like that, but... Let's see, man. Snow just needs to win one more game, and he moves on to the next round. If not, it's going to be Rush going up against Best. All right, into it. Game number three. Oh, they're even hosting on the correct map. All right, Polypoid, here we go. I was kind of hoping that we'd host Ascension. <laughs> So, we have Snow in the top left, Rush in the bottom left. And let's see what kind of game we're going to have here from Snow. There's a Really, you need to watch the Protoss first to see what they're, they're going to do to have an idea of the, the game. Unless Terran does a two-factory, and I don't think you two-factory Snow. No, probably I think, not. I think you're... I mean, that that's a... Two-factory is like... A, against the best Protosses. It's too much of a gamble build for a game three when you've been yeah. outplaying him, honestly. Like, Rush has been... Uh, deflecting everything Snow has done. Like, Rush is playing better than Snow here today. So, yeah, the two-factory is not the risk you want to take, I think. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I do agree with the point you were making earlier, which was that it just seems like Rush is actually playing better. Mm-hmm. Like, Snow is, is so amazing at the matchup that he can kind of screw up early on and then just kind of Hail Mary it mm -hmm. uh, uh, to a victory. Just take a big risk where, like, you instantly die if they scout it, and if not, yeah. hey, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you can get it. Um, Really good carrier control back there, though. Mm -hmm. it, it makes games like that really make me appreciate the way maps are shaped where I, I never really noticed just how abusable that area is in the top oh, left. Yeah, like yeah. the fact that, first of all, Protoss get for free the bottom right base. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do is kind of just take fights and just abuse counterattack areas on either side of that little uh, circle area. Totally. With, with, with the, uh, yeah, there's terrain that you can't move through right in the middle. And he really stretched the game out to a pretty incredible level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very different from the game with Best. We're going to have Snow opening up with 
basically the textbook PVT opener. Mm -hmm. One gate, so no quick nexus. No, nothing like that. And uh, it, Rush is actually going to scout him first, so that's some really great intel. Rush has been planning here uh, to go ahead with a gasless expansion. And because Snow is scouting him kind of late, he's going to get that off without a hitch. Uh, so as far as I look at these build orders, it definitely looks like an advantage to Rush. Especially with no Zealot being made. This is like yeah. exactly what you want as a Terran player. Yeah, he's going to be able to get away with this. You know, when the Protoss gets in here and sees this, it's a little bit scary. Because mm -hmm. you realize they're already uh, outgrowing you. Um, now, there are some rushes we could see from the Protoss. Uh, there is a Zealot inbound, but that's not going to get there before a bunker should be finished, I believe. Yeah, he... Well, I guess he has to start the bunker, like, right now. Okay, there it goes. And he'll probably have to pull a couple additional SCVs as well, because obviously the Zealot can kind of run past. Yeah. But, yeah, they, I mean, it's a gate in his main. It, the Zealot was not particularly rushed out or anything. Looking good for Rush so far. He does have his gas finishing up as well. Of course, the SCV is going to go to the ramp and kind of force this Zealot back. Yeah, and this seems to be the, the right play that a lot of good players do is they basically send the Zealot across and try to interrupt more. Because uh, you're not going to get any value out of the Zealot otherwise. Mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to hide some kind of weird, like, DT tech. But then, you know, they see there's a Zealot at the ramp and they Ooh. kind of just blind counter it. Rush is really playing a pretty perfect micro he game is. here. He basically shut everything down. Wow. Uh, SCVs are damaged, but it doesn't matter. They can mine as uh, much as they want. And so we're going to have this Nexus started here at about four minutes. And for Terran, the command center is going to be finishing here. So, I mean, this is pretty damn bad uh, yeah. for the Protoss. Honestly, like, what, what do you think Snow should even go for from here? Because this is a perfect situation for Rush. This is what Terran dreams are made out of. Oh, I mean, I, I look at this, and I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what Snow decides to do. Because when you're behind, you know, that's really when you get to see... What I should say, when a good player is behind, mm -hmm. you, you get to see how they think uh, really well. Because, you know, when you're ahead, that's kind of always an easy call, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, let's see what exactly he's going to try to do. Um, I mean, because it's snow, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes into Reaver Tech and just tries yeah. to play a control game. It does seem like he sort of always does this. Yeah, he's so stylistic. In that where, regard. like, you know, Bisu or, 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 or Mini or a lot of these guys, they almost seem to have a bigger range than Snow. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. But Snow's, the way he does it, wins more PVTs than everybody else. Pretty much. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, honestly, I only really put Best at a similar level. PVT is Snow. And they play completely yeah. differently. Like, Best is one of those guys with a lot of range, whereas Snow... Yeah, I mean, it, you, you mentioned it when he did that really strange Reaver drop to do the extra damage near the natural on, on Eclipse. Where it's like, well, only he sees that. Only he goes to try to hurt that. And then he does it, and that wasn't even the part where he threw the Reaver away. Yeah. That he actually got in and got out, and I'm like, well, I, I don't understand. Like, mm-hmm. Anybody else tries that and they get punished so severely. Dragoons right now. Uh, just pounding on that bunker. Quick armory coming up here for Rush. So he's going for a very macro focus build. He'll be getting siege mode. Uh, really quick weapon upgrade. He's getting that defensive turret already. Yeah, this looks, this looks really nice for Rush. And Snow, he immediately takes a third base. Okay. And I, I guess this is fine. I mean, you have to do something to catch up, right? I mean, it's, it almost seems unimaginable to not take a third base in this moment. Like, if you really just get your second base up and then you try to... Yeah, it's it's like if, if Terran goes two-fact uh, pressure, that's going to be good against this. But everything else Snow's build, I think, is, is very solid against. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even though it's a pushable area, you have that high ground area over there, so you're kind of fine. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard for either race to really attack up in there. And I think he's going to make a little ring around his base with these turrets. And now the Observer is just not going to know what's going on. Oh, he might be able to slip through. Uh, looks like oh, he wanted he to. He thought about it. <laughs> he wanted to. Can't quite That's do it. That's rough though. because now you just don't know what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. You don't know if there's you know a bunch more factories coming, another uh, command center. It looks like it might be a bunch more factories. Seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like he wants to throw down two right now. And you know what? It was a gasless expansion opener, so he definitely can go for something like sure. that. Sure, yeah. 
Uh, probably wants to get the starport pretty quickly here as well. Academy coming up. Oh, that's going to be starport, I think, right there. It looks like a oh, no, factory. No, okay, factory. Okay. no, I thought the same thing as you when you put it up there. Yeah. Sometimes you put the starport a bit more out of the way. Which, honestly, I think Terran should stop doing. No one has good science vegetable production, but... Um, yeah, I wonder. I wonder what his his overall plan is here, because I, I don't think there's any rush timing. Maybe this just he feels like this hits his economy just right, and his comsats are late enough that he he doesn't know what Snow is doing really. Right, but Snow doesn't know what the Terran's doing either. Yeah, um, he knows so. that there is a turret ring in siege mode, which is a reasonable amount to know, right? Where you're like, yeah. okay, it takes him a while to be able to attack me from that position. And now he's gonna play. I think a pretty tight mid game here. You're, he's basically treating it as if he's going to be attacked because that's the safest of the two options. You know, it's like the, the riskier version would be, I don't know what he's going to do. I'm going to take a fourth base and that dies to a rush. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, let's say the Terran's going to go mass factory. Then you try to match them. You try to fight them and win the fight. Yeah. If they try to expand, then you have to figure out, can I break this expansion while I'm expanding? Mm -hmm. And so this is the correct... Uh, switch in the decision tree here uh, for for Protoss is, is, as far as what they can see here from the Terran. And actually what Rush is doing is he is definitely doing a two-base timing attack. This is going to be very interesting to see if he can just roll snow over it. My gut is yes. His expansion was so fast, he blocked all observers from coming in and then added the factories. So... Like you said, Snow isn't sure. He's teching up heavily. He has the Reaver, yeah. Okay, now he needs to get this shuttle over here. The shuttle is way too far away from the Reaver. Ah! Yeah, some serious damage put onto that. Siege tank's moving forward right now. Oh, he just unseized everything. That's going to be a little opening here to try to do some more damage. Mm. So you can see, th this is Snow. He really knows how to abuse the little area in between the tank sieging up and unseizing. Vulture out there does scout the third base. Oh, oh Reaver no, goes again? down. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, this looks really good for Rush right now. If you kill that Reaver, you feel like you can go across the map pretty quickly now. Yeah. Uh, Snow's got the right idea of keeping these Dragoons on the high ground. I just see Dragoons, though. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that's all there is. You're definitely right about that. It's just Dragoons, so that's going to make it not pretty good. difficult for him. He's microing as best he can. He's buying time like he... He attacked down and tried to draw everything up. It looks like he actually wanted to go into Carrier there. Like, he, he threw down a Stargate yeah. right after the scan went away. But we don't have the Citadel, as far as I know. So, it looks like he wanted to go Carrier, but now he's forced into mass gateway units. Which, I mean, that should be good for Rush. No, I, I think there's a chance Protoss holds this, but it's not going to be easy. Mm. You know, with the Reaver here, you can really slow down the momentum. Oh my god, he's going to commit here. And this is a lot of siege mode damage here. Honestly, the Dragoon splitting is pretty insane. Mm. I want to point out they're just spaced out enough that they're not sharing splash damage from the tanks. Yeah, and, and he actually cleans up all the tanks. I can't believe... I can't believe he did that. That is so impressive. Yeah, yeah. He just <laughs> spaced it out perfectly. The siege tank shots firing up onto the high ground. Just didn't all quite connect enough. Mm -hmm. um, Rush, you know, honestly, maybe over committing there a little bit. Yeah. He didn't have any other units. Siege tanks alone think, are not very good. I think he needs to wait a little bit mm. before he attacks. See how many see how many more vultures are here now? Imagine those were here with the rest of these tanks. Mm. I think I think he probably kills them. But, you know, Terran is very strong until they are suddenly completely weakened and get killed off. Yeah. You know, and it's it, you'll see this moment from the Protoss' perspective where you look at that and you go, oh, you don't have, like, enough vultures here, mm -hmm. like that fight. Okay, I just kill you then. The tanks die pretty fast. They act, you actually need vultures to tank. It's weird because vultures are so weak and they don't do a lot of damage, but six Dragoon shots to tank, that's nearly a full shot, uh, you know, enough shots to kill a tank there. Dragoons don't fire fast. No, no, they certainly do not. You know, they don't do their full damage there to vultures, so you're... you're Quite right. It's a rule that I generally tell, like when people ask, oh, "God, I, you know, I have such a hard time attacking in TVP and stuff. Like, how do you how do you do it? Never attack with just tanks. They're just like Never. they're super weak. You always need vultures yeah. with them. Now, uh, it is Arbiter Tech here, right? Uh, and it looks like he just started air attack on his Cybernex Core as well. 
Yeah. I, I could have sworn. It looked to me like he wanted or to go. Or air armor or something. I mean. <laughs> that would be wild. Uh, but maybe preparing for carriers later on, like that switch that we that saw. That could in be. Okay. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. You might be right about that, Artosis. Yeah. Also, you can just scare people by getting air attack, honestly. When a Terran, a lot of times, if you don't have enough scans, you just scan the core. So. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, that could be one of these super meta ideas where it's like, this doesn't cost anything. And if I can completely throw him off his tech for the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to see the snow drop below 100 minerals, 100 gas. So if you think of it in that regard, it really doesn't cost anything. Right. Okay, so the vulture drop actually does all right here. Yeah, this Denying is... Denying a lot of mining time, get some probes. Pretty big nuisance, to be honest. Uh, Protoss is trying to grow now into the top right. Yeah, still harassing a little bit. Vulture's uh, kind of being sent up everywhere. Going to suicide onto some probes, which is... This is really nice. I mean, when you start hurting probes... It becomes very worth it to suicide more and more vultures to kill more and more probes. You know, honestly, um, I don't feel like Snow has a lot of workers. Like, if, if, you look, if we get yeah. a couple different shots here, it seems right. like he played a pretty tight game where he didn't make that many workers to get out enough of an army to try to take fights. Mm -hmm. um, so he's having to remake that on, on every part of the map here. Uh, now, Rush doesn't have a fourth base. He doesn't have to have one right now, but it kind of shows us what kind of game we're in. It's him basically powering on three bases. Oh, Whoa, what was that? That was Stargates. Oh, yeah, he wow. Was, he okay. was trying once again to switch into carriers without getting scouted. So double Stargate and Fleet Beacon gets canceled in the top right. That Vulture doing some serious work yeah, for Rush. That's pretty huge. That's a good spot to try to hide stuff. Mm -hmm. So here comes another push from Terran, and this push is... is accompanied by an adequate number of vultures here. Yeah. I mean, this is something that really is going to make Protoss sweat seeing something like this come at him. He drops some of the Reavers. The uh, shuttle's taking quite a bit of damage. And it's going to come down to this fight over here at the fourth base. I love the drop over here, by the way. Mm, great location for the tank. They never really have anything right there. Not going to end up getting that much, but he's keeping him busy right now while Rush continues to rally up. Goons clearing out the outer mines here. Snow with some impeccable control on the distancing from these tanks. Now, I never want to count Snow out. Um, again, this looks like it's going to be a very good rush here from Rush. Very good push here from Rush, excuse me. Um, oh, he's going to scan. And he picks up the Reaver and pulls it away. Now, Protoss can allow this base to fall, and it's not the end of the world. But um, you do need to be able to do something to this mm -hmm. push that's coming here. Well, the push is not going to stop. Like, he's going to go to the natural after he hits here. And if yeah. he has a way to the natural, then 12 o'clock falls as well. Right. So, Snow, like, yeah, the, this Nexus is not the end of the world, but he has to do something. Whether that's a recall, whether that's breaking the army, there needs to be something else. He can't just keep backing up. The Scarab shots keep coming out. They keep connecting on these vultures. And, I mean, this is kind of insane, man. I... I Again, I don't want to count Snow out. Let's see what he's in. He's, I like this. He just takes the Zealot and, and, and runs through, uh, you know, the, to try to eat up any mines that are there. And look at Rush. He's going to move right through the middle. Yeah, picks off an Observer there and decides to turn around. I think he's going to regroup a little bit. He's just about maxed out. Some more cannons going up at the top right. He's, you know, he just he's spread a bit thin, so he's afraid of huge Vulture attacks anywhere. Yep. I think Rush is being almost maybe too careful. I feel like, you know, it's easy for us to see, but I, I, I feel like he should have gotten in there and contained the Protoss. Hmm. And then and then fractured off a little bit uh, of yeah. his army and then just closed the game out from here. It, it feels like he's just continually zoning the army off from counterattacking, but now he's got such a wide minefield, a counterattack will take a very long time to get to him. So I think he has uh, enough open room here now to be able to move up, to actually get an attack off. Yeah, he's going to cut the army in half over here now. Again, it really, it's going to come down to how does Protoss deal with this army. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's going to try to set up for maybe uh, a counterattack or a recall. Either that or he needs to get some stasis off here. Ooh, there's a juicy one right there. Oof. That was really good. Oh, wow. my 
god. Now, is he is he able to actually come in after this and do an attack? I'm not totally sure. Mm. Oh, maybe with these vultures leaving, he's going to lose probes, but maybe he can try to take Yeah, I think you're right. He should attack the main army with those vultures yeah. out of position. Oh, god, but there's so many tanks. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. He's And honestly, okay, there's another oh stasis gosh. here. Yeah, I don't but... I know if Protoss has enough to break this. I feel like Rush just sort of barely has enough that, like... There's nothing Snow can do. Yeah, and so he can't really even break this. These units are going to be unfrozen mm. soon. And he's Terrence losing 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely does look that way. He's up 40 supply right now, and everything's about to become unfrozen. There it is. The army returns to rush as he pushes forward towards his natural. And look at that. Can't even make the Archon. Yeah. This is going to be the end of Snow. Yeah, no. Snow got outplayed here, I got to say. Rush just looked like a way better player. I think we saw Snow in all of our games here tonight. Miscontrol units. Mm. Make some questionable decisions. He didn't look as sharp as he usually does. Certainly didn't. And, yeah. So, Rush, I mean, this is basically the killing blows. He's got his fourth base up. Uh, the last thing I can think of for Snow is, like, maybe he could, like, recall the fourth base, but he's going to be trapped on, like, two bases, basically. He's main in the top right, and that's that's just not going to be enough. GG wow. is called, and Rush moves forward to the finals. Very cool. And so this is going to be uh, best versus Rush. Yeah. Another All right. So we're, we're gonna I like the deep dive. Yeah, we're going to do a real deep dive here. And I'll tell you what, I think Rush looks like the best player who's playing right now. Best yeah. looked good, but it was rocky. Yeah. Rush is in super good shape at the moment. I think that uh, there's a few Terran players up at the top right now that feel like, you know what, this is the moment. Flash isn't here overshadowing everybody's in the military. And it's time for someone like Rush to rise up and win that championship. Yeah. Very welcomed. So, um, I mean, props to, to Rush. I, I think Snow played, I think, one of the more disappointing PVTs we've seen in the last couple of years, to be honest with him. Mm. Uh, you know, the guy that's known for the best Reaver control in the world lost Reavers in every game. Needlessly. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'll be regretting that one as he goes through the ASL qualifiers. <laughs> right. Uh, so, again, all the players we're seeing here today, there's a high chance we have them in the ASL. No, oh, yeah, no, these guys are so good. It's this almost is, impossible to stop them from qualifying. This is the fight to get Larva's spot, basically. Mm -hmm. Guys, we got a break. We come back to final best of three. Don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for waiting. Uh, we are going to go into this final best of three. Best versus Rush. Uh, to start things off, it'll be Polyphoid, then Eclipse, and then Ascension. This is going to be an excellent match. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think Rush is playing fantastically here tonight. Let's see what Best can do to hold him off. Really feels like it could be anyone's series, and it might even just come down to the slight randomness of how they open, right? Sometimes you just open and such a way that you can punish your opponent more easily or, uh, you know, not get punished by whatever they're doing. And as a reminder, the reason why we're having this um, mini tournament, this wild card uh, match, is because Larva's not going to be in the next season of ASL. I know, it's crazy, right? Like, the guy that just won the whole thing. Uh, well, he's taking some time off because he's having some problems with his wrist. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, time will heal that. So I think he definitely made the right call. I think it's totally okay to take a step back after you've won the biggest StarCraft 1 competition mm -hmm. there is. You're on totally. top of the world. Um, and so we do have rules in place for tournaments like this where we do have a mini competition because it is definitely something you want to try to squeeze your way into is, is one of those spots to be guaranteed a better position oh, in the yeah. ASL. So. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to these two players. I'm happy with whoever manages to take it, either Best or Rush. Yeah, both would be really well-deserving. Both very much at the top of the race. All right, guys, let's go into this best of three and sort out who will become the champion of the wild card tournament and get that much-wanted spot in Season 2 of ASL 2021.
Okay, in the bottom left, we have our Protoss player, Best. And in the bottom right, we have Rush. Yeah, t I think totally fine spawns. See what they want to open up with. Looks like they're two and two so far. Cool. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. Um, I do think Rush is looking like the strongest player today. Mm -hmm. He really hasn't made any mistakes. The uh, the games that Best had were kind of crazy, uh, especially Game Two where we saw Best kind of. Uh, in, in this almost base trade-like situation, actually managed to overcome and get a win, and we knew that ba uh, you know the Reaver was going to come in as well and, and help with the closer here. Uh, this time around, uh, we don't know if uh, Bess is going to go for Nexus first or what, but I, I look forward to seeing what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's definitely not a bad map for Nexus first. Uh, Rush, he's definitely someone that rotates in things like Gasless expansion, so you got to factor that in as well. Right. Looks like Best is going to throw down his gateway. But there's so many builds out there right now that it's like, it's hard to really narrow down and say, oh, this guy's going to do this and this guy's going to do that. There's a lot of different ways to play this this matchup. It, it really is yeah. a lot of fun. This matchup really functions differently from every other matchup in the game. And you really don't find it, um, again, like anything even similar to it in other RTSs. Hmm. It's funny how it works. You know, with the, with the Terran being so strong and having such range, but at the same time being so brittle, mm. if they're out of position, the fact that the Protoss units start out being really punishing, but then get so weak they have to kind of do this avoidant play. Yeah. Uh, the kind of crazy techs that Protoss can get in the late game, but there is always an answer for Terran there as well. Mm. It's just a funny matchup. And also the fact that Protoss are not a race that take a ton of aces and, and, and take the whole map with the exception of this matchup. Yeah, yeah. And, and that can be kind of one of the harder things there as Terran, right? Like, you gotta you gotta manage everything and try to fight back. Generally speaking, like, a, a standard game will be the first time you're really moving out is three base against five base. Right. And, you know, it, it's like max out army versus max out army, and you see how that goes, and you, you know, you're always gonna be down those bases trying to fight back uh, economically. But... You know, there's there's like such a variety that you can do as well, right? Like we saw Rush uh, previously on this map try to go for a two base timing that didn't work. Still was able to fall back into the macro play and beat Snow. Now here against Best, it looks like a factory expand. Should be a factory expand on Best side. Should just be a Nexus coming up pretty quickly here. So nothing out of the ordinary. No, these are very very normal uh, ways to approach the game to start things out. We're gonna have that Dragoon come out here. Probably try to put a little bit of pressure on. The CC is going to be coming here, planted onto the low ground. There's no Zealot here for the Protoss. There's no way to really rush in or try to do any damage. And the Dragoon, yeah, he's just kind of walking around, making sure he can catch that SC. He didn't see the CC, right? Oh, yeah, I, I guess he did not. You're right, yeah. He tried to he tried to duck in there and see it. Uh, the Goon can probably go over and check. And honestly, it's like almost always there's going to be a CC coming up. I think in positions like this, you generally will not two-fact. It would be, like, very risky because they do have that high ground so close to their base, right? So it's, like, very hard right. to push up. Yeah, two-factory, though, if you can get it set up, uh, it can be very devastating. The thing for, for Protoss is a lot of times you're just trying to confirm a few things. You're trying to tick off a few boxes, and one of them is to make sure that you don't see no command center down there because then you know, oh, my God, he's going to try to end this right now, and I need to be completely prepared. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so best went for Nexus on 21. You can see the SCV also has the same intentions of basically scouting and trying to confirm, okay, is there actually a Nexus coming here? Because otherwise there might be proxy DTs or a proxy Reaver or some kind of you know, weird drop. Mm -hmm. Now, a Vulture first. Let's see if he adds a second Vulture to that. Because I know that Rush actually has a, a build that he likes to do occasionally. Yes, two Vultures in speed. Uh, and this is actually one of the most powerful TVP openers because okay. if you run by, like, if you get up the ramp into the main base, you're going to kill, like, seven probes. 
at least. Mm, yeah. Well, I guess uh, things can go wrong. Obviously, you can take damage on the way. You can get stuck somewhere. You overcommit. But if this is speed, which I think it's going to be, the way he's moving his vultures, this is how you move vultures that have the speed upgrade coming. Here we go. He's going to try to run past. Oh, God. Best is in oh, trouble. Oh, man. They get in. Oh, misses that one volley. Okay, so let's see. One probe. Two. Two. Yeah, running around right now. The Sim City actually oh, helping quite a bit. The, my. Oh, yeah. Glitching that. Amazing. Okay, well, I guess we're not going to watch and see exactly how many. So he doesn't end up getting as many as I was uh, saying there. That this was, some was... Good, good pulling, but it was still a very good opener. As Taryn, you still feel good about this. You you probably kick yourself saying, I could have gotten a little bit more. Like, I'm sure he must have gotten three, four probes easily there. I'm surprised he didn't get more, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, basically the worst thing that can happen to you when you're doing these builds is the vulture gets in your base. Mm. When you see a vulture run in there, you just know, oh, God, you know, you don't have a lot. You're just getting started as, as, as a macro game for Protoss. You, you've just laid down the first few pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Um... But, I mean, pretty clutch control there. Um, one little trick for those that are trying to learn is that uh, you can hotkey screens. The default hotkey for F2 is actually always over your Nexus. Yeah. But you can hotkey the other one is F3. And I remember when Noni came to Korea a long time ago, uh, this is kind of when we learned there was mechanical things that some players were doing in Korea that others were not doing as foreigners. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was one of the first things they made Noni do when he joined a pro house. Yes, that's right, is was, to switch that over to stop drop harassment. Yeah, that in order to stop that, you always just F2, grab is up to 12, F3, move away, F2, grab the rest, F3. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's there's so many little mechanical things like that. That's why StarCraft's so so damn fun to play. Well, it's, it's, it's one of the things that the people that don't like the game see as a flaw, and the people that do like the game see as a feature. Mm-hmm is you're trying to figure out how to do all these commands as quickly as possible. Um, and Well, it's it's classic pianists against iPad DJs, basically. That's, yes, the, it's, that's uh, <laughs> the two camps of argument. It's, it's like the, everything guess what? should be iPad automated. DJs are wrong. Yeah, it's like, I want the game to be as smooth as possible, but then you can't have these kind of messy fights that you normally have, right? Mm. Um, it's why you can't grab all of your army and attack. I mean, it would be nice if you could grab all of your workers with one button and move them somewhere. But then guess what? Those vulture drops wouldn't do anything. Yeah. You know, it'd be very, very <laughs> easy to, the, the, you know, it, it would just be easy to save everything. And, yeah. and we would always know exactly the amount that, uh, you know. Listen, those gamers can go play Risk all they want, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this game isn't for you then. Yeah, but I, when you get games like this, yeah. I think it, it actually makes it a lot of fun to try to figure out. Even when you're trying to remap rally points, there's like yeah. a whole technique to that, like hockeying the screen over the gates, mm -hmm. hockey the screen there, and then you click everything. Or there, there, there's, it's it's a fun thing, and, and when you get better at those little parts, you can get a little bit further ahead in that regard too. And now still running around with the speed vultures. He's laid some mines out. Uh, he has set up three factories at home. Best now. Has his own shuttle. Uh, has a reaver in there, I believe, as well. Just constantly sending vultures out just every which way. Looks like he's going to start his third command center very shortly here. Looks like an armory coming up. Science facility should be being made as well. So it looks like Rush is just going to a very normal continuation with this. 2-1. Get your third base. He's going to, you know, start adding mass factories here in another minute and a half or so. And we should get into, like, a, a pretty standard macro game from here, honestly. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, you know, no, nobody took a clear lead here. Uh, I think we may end up getting a mass shuttle game, though. We see shuttle speeds done here. Oh, he's maybe. Gonna, he's going to be grabbing that. I would love to see, a, you know, the, the double robot. Oh, I want, I want you to see it, Tasteless. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen only a very little bit, but it's one of these things I haven't quite wrapped mm. my head around. Now, that's a big scout to see that command center. Once you see the CC making, you know exactly what's going on. And we just saw the Citadel go down as well here for best. So we should be seeing him tech up towards Arbiters or High Templars. And uh, has his Reavers outside. There's enough turrets that it doesn't look like he really wants to try to get the harassment done. Just constant upgrades going. The mine laying is amazing here. There's so much information for Rush on the map. Second Robo. <gasps> He's going to do it. Here we go, Tasteless. Okay, so... This is something we've talked about. 
I remember I remember hearing about this, and then I asked you, and you're like, no, nobody does that. And then like two months later, you came back, you're like, tasteless. Did you know about this double robo thing? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, is it actually happening now? Um, so it, keep in mind that you know we always see uh, Terrans get busted with good shuttle play, but a lot of uh, Protosses have realized you could just keep making shuttles and basically plop the army on top. Well, mm. why not just get double robo? You can make Reavers, you can upgrade Scarab damage, and oh my god, is Vespa lose? Ooh, what is up bit, with Reavers just sloppy. dying today? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. So this is... Th this. I wish this is the way the game actually works, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way um, to try to break a Terran for taking a third base. And so you can see, suddenly you just have more and more shuttles. You lose a Reaver, and it's always a big deal, but not as much of a big deal when you're not making out of no, one Robo. It, in this particular strategy, you actually have much smaller armies. And look, two speed shells just flew over some mines, so as long as Rush caught that, he knows exactly what's going on. Look, he has a Wraith out already. He's adding missile turrets, and here we go. There's a lot of turrets in here, as well as that Wraith. Yeah, and he's getting a pretty nice unload here. Is there a Reaver in one of these? Yes, there is! He picks it up, taking a little bit more damage. Well, you couldn't have dealt with this better than he did. Whew. Oh my what? god. <laughs> I don't know how many kills that was, but that was impressive. It was decent, but yeah, overall, that was not good for Bess. Overall, Rush has to be happy with how he held that. And so, you know, the turrets, which are usually intended to just gun down one turret from coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have three turrets and most, uh, three shuttles, excuse me, and most of them are full of cheap units like zealots you can basically sack two shuttles kill off all the turrets and the final shuttle that gets in there at the end uh actually ends up doing you know uh with the, with the reaver killing off the scds back mm. there now trying to hit him once again he dive bombs onto some of these tanks brings up his dragoons as well not quite enough here for best he has to pull back uh you know this is such a harassment backstabby type of style it's om I almost feel like you shouldn't really be attacking their army at this point. I think you need to do more damage first, but that's what Bess was trying. Backs up now as the vultures come out to harass him a bit. And I, I want to see what else he does with it. Like, I, I don't see the additional shuttles. You know, the normal way to play this style right now, like, you continually make shuttles for quite a while. I mean, I've always found it to be kind of troubling from the Terrence perspective. Like, what are you supposed to do against this exactly? Mm. You know, it's um, it, it's almost like you've checked into baby Arbiters or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, you can get in there. I mean, at least with Arbiters, Terran has time before they have to worry about that. But here, you could just kind of bombard them. But it also seems like it's a very easy way for Protoss to end up throwing the game away if they don't play correctly. Yeah, there there becomes this moment where Terran just kind of has a bigger army than you, but you have yeah. to you have to keep them back with those shuttle plays, because you know you're going to be a little bit later on everything else because you did buy the second row when you're putting so much money into this. Now Rush, it it feels like he's defended very well. I don't know how many turrets he remade in the main base, but best from here should be getting into Psy Storm. He's got four bases up, so that's pretty healthy overall. Mm -hmm. And I mean, high Templars in the shuttles are going to help out a lot. It's slowing to Rush down. So four bases is, uh, are up here. You still need to get that fifth base up for best. But it, it seems like whenever you go for the robo play, you're kind of locked in to powering out with, with shuttles. I mean, shuttles don't take that long to make, and they're pretty expensive considering. Um, so it, it would seem like that would naturally slow down the fifth uh, nexus. Yeah, it, it, from what I've seen is you generally are very, very slow on a fifth base with mm -hmm. this type of strategy. And by the time you get into the fifth base, you kind of turn it around. You're not so much dive bombing in. You're more utilizing the High Templars for, you know, the strategy in between this and Arbiter, right, is the just speed shuttles with High Templars. So you get your harassment done. You kind of have those up in the air so that they're harder for Terran to kill off. We'll and all probably that. eventually have Arbiters. But, yeah, we've seen a lot of Protosses just sit on Templars. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea is that... Keep in mind, guys, Storm doesn't care what your upgrades are. Does full damage. Doesn't care at all. Um, and so that's one way that Protoss can actually just thin out these big chunks of Terran units. I wish there was a Storm Armor upgrade. That would oh, be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, a, lot of a lot of turrets going up, but the shuttles are coming. This is four speed shuttles. 
he is going to be getting in there with quite a few units, and we don't have the mines relayed. Okay, here we go. The wow. two uh, the two reavers do get out. I don't see any high templars in here. Oh, that mine hit really doing some work right there. Yeah, very nicely done. Does he get the damage upgrade on the scarabs? I, I don't wonder. know. They're no, I, I don't know if the observer even knows to check about that. Well, he was <laughs> checking scarab damage throughout the other uh, games. Okay. Well, either way, uh, the reaver, it's doing all right. It clicks on anything we can tell. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, this is going okay for best, but again, I worry that Terran, you know, if, if you don't really batter and bruise the, the, the Terran player, I just worry that you get to this point where, like, Terran's like, all right, anyways, I'm, mm -hmm. I've got plus two attack, plus one armor, in this case, plus three attack, plus two armor. He's like, let's go kill the Protoss. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is yeah. the main thing. Look, he's got three add-ons. So that yeah. is infinity tanks. Like, the amount of tanks you get He's going to go, where's your shuttle god now? And yeah. just kill him? <laughs> he might. Yeah. I mean, when you get enough tanks with plus three, even zealots have a hard time Bro, getting on top of them. They're going, whoa, look at me with speed shuttles <laughs> flying around. He's like, yeah. watch this. And he just rolls over him and kills him. <laughs> but I can drop on your tanks. Yeah. And these, well, these yeah, tanks just turn and shoot the zealots. At that point, the Protoss is the guy at the fair that has all the balloons that he's selling for too high of a price. Yeah. This is a lot of siege tanks. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's a scary looking army. This is I, when you're Protoss and you're, you're doing this. Like you were excited at the start of this, and eventually you're looking over there like, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of tanks. Yeah. He's. I'm gonna eventually have to deal with all of these tanks and vultures, aren't I? Well, here we go. We're gonna see if he's able to do it. Psystorm comes out. That was a very good Psystorm. He only loses some zealots there. But Storm doesn't care about your upgrades, <laughs> and then everything for Protoss dies here. Okay. Coming forward again. If I can get 14 more perfectly placed storms. Uh oh. All right, gets the uh, gets one reaver. Right. The, dude, there's no way this army can ever no, stop what Rush he, has. He could just leapfrog the tanks. Yeah. Rush is going to pulverize. Yeah. Here. This is beautiful. Look at this. The only thing we can say that's bad for Rush in this situation is we don't actually have a fourth base up. Yeah, but I think he basically played this so that he would never have to. I mean, if he got a fourth base in the shuttles, would be doing I a think, lot more I damage. I think he's making a fourth nexus, like above his natural. Uh, I can't. Oh no, he is. I'm just saying. Yeah. I think. I think when you play against this, the whole idea is you don't take a fourth base because then the, you can't punish the yeah, Protoss yeah, yeah. at all. I, I think if you go four bases, the Protoss is like, oh, okay, good. Now I actually get to use this this technique. Mm. Where instead, it's like there's nowhere you could drop with the main, which is just fed into the Terran. And look at this. The Psystorms continue to come out, and he does shave off the vessel, some of the vultures, a few tanks. But the push is never-ending. It is continuing to come forward here for Rush. He's up a good 20 supply right now. Oh, six Storm there, killing a vulture. Yeah. <laughs> Throws him down on these tanks as well. Probes trying to transfer during all this get absolutely destroyed. Some very good Psystorms coming out. He's, I mean, he's whittling the tank number down a little bit, but not enough. I mean, yeah, he, he's doing an okay job, but, you know, the problem is there's just so many tanks that when one falls, there's so many more behind it. Mm. He's got to be careful. This is kind of bunched up. But... Oh, that's a good storm right there. Trying to dive bomb again, but he can't attack up that hill against and these upgrades with the size of an army. This wall in at the entrance, which is designed to stop vultures from coming into the main, is now uh, a bottleneck that the army can't mm. get out and fight adequately yet. Yeah, that is true. I wonder if Protoss at some point should kill those buildings. Could be. I mean, it might they, be worthwhile. Sometimes they kill the parts of their wall against Zerg to make sure they can come out against Lurker quickly enough. It's kind of a similar idea, I guess. Well, the sh shuttles are going around the map again, so it seems like Best is giving up his natural. Oh, he just started his fourth. Okay, so Rush actually was only on three bases for 19 minutes before starting that fourth CC. That's a long time. I mean, oh, that's funny. He's just going to expand it in the natural. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, actually. Yeah, it does. It does. All you got to do is mine wherever your army's at. Mm -hmm. Well, that's his safest place on the map, actually, because that's where all the units are. So, yeah, makes sense. He's going to have to cancel that. Sick so, 
I mean, the issue right now is that, I mean, besides the headache of resetting all of these rally points, which is actually pretty time consuming, um, all that Terran has to do now is come up here and smush the uh, the natural expansion over here. Oh, no, that's a funny concept. I guess that didn't occur to me until we saw it, but you could storm SCVs over yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> you got to have something set up. Now, Rush is getting ready to hit additional bases. You have to make sure you leave enough to defend and to stop units from coming out freely from the main base. Oh, kind of uh, some interesting harassment going down here. Oh, not bad. Yeah, doesn't get as much as he wanted with that high temper. A lot of damage to the SCVs, but not kills. You know, if if uh, Best had, like, a couple Arbiters with Recall, I would give him a much higher chance in this game, but I think he's just so clogged up at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, this shuttle play, I think we don't... Nobody fully knows you know, how much potential this has, depending, because, it, again, I think when you look at what Rush did, he sort of just didn't play into the situation. Mm. He just stayed on three bases and just fend it off the drops. Then he's like, all right, well, you don't have stasis and you don't have carriers. Mm -hmm. And I have a ridiculous amount of tanks, so I will just take these fights. Look at this. He, Bess is still harassing the economy a lot. He did a drop down at yeah, six. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. GG. All right. Rush takes game one and yeah. is one victory away from being the champion of the wild card tournament. <laughs> well, that would be a... Uh... That would be very welcome for Rush to just start off in the oh, round yeah. 16 as one of the group leaders. Well, I think we're we're due for a new Terran hero. You know oh, what I'm yes, saying? And we, sure. we, we need a Terran player who's really going to come out and dominate. No, no disrespect to Light, but he's been around for quite some time now. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we are at the point in time where, uh, you know, our Lights, our Bisous, all these guys are super old school. And mm -hmm. so you, when you see somebody like Mini coming out and doing very well or seeing Rush, <laughs> Not that these guys just started playing, by the way. No, no. But that they are uh, are really dominating, like the greats of the past. Yeah. Hey, well, we need the fresh blood. We need these guys that are coming up with their own ideas, their own takes. You know. Yeah. You can't rely on Flash solving every meta forever. That's for no. sure. I'm probably one of the only people that actually likes it when Flash loses. Yeah, well, you are like, a hater. I am. No, I am. Yeah. You don't I, like truth. You don't like justice. <laughs> no, I, no it, 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 it doesn't matter what race it is. It's just once we get somebody who starts to win yeah, yeah. too much, I'm like, okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to root against you. I mean, obviously, the guy's a genius, and he's, you know, super exciting to cast and stuff. But, like, even when we came back, you know, to cast StarCraft 1, I'm like, still Flash. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Is it, was it as bad as before? Oh, it's even worse, oh, it's now? worse now? Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, right Eclipse. Gamers. Yeah, Eclipse going to be next. Uh, Yeah, Best has a good shot here. Let's see what he does. Yeah, I mean, um, PBT, a lot of stuff Protoss can do here. Um, I think Best is going to have to have a really strong performance. Uh, I do, you know, I really want to see more of the double robo play. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does seem like this is something everybody's been tinkering with and people aren't sure. You know, it started out with lots of speed shuttles. Yeah. And now we've got to the, the, the two robo play, which is kind of crazy. Oh. Uh, I've heard whispers of three robo, but I feel like that's probably not. That's insane. That's not probably yeah. good, but. Yeah. I think two gives you so much. Well, it's actually completely I mean, just surprising. Think of what happens if you have that many Reavers dropping. <sighs> Well, at that point, gates and there's three robos. And eventually, it's like, if it's just robo units, it's like going to turn into BCs versus Reavers or something. All my all my supplies, command centers, because they lift off and just and just fire them down with wraiths and, <laughs> yeah. and shoot the Reavers. Oh my um, God. So, uh, in, in this game, uh, Best has actually put the pile on. It 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 actually looks like he's going for a PVZ build, but mm -hmm. this is a uh, the actually one of the oldest builds in the game. It's where you make the gateway as part of the wall in at the natural. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, because the zealot gets across the map a little bit quicker. And yeah. that, that makes a big deal in this matchup. And then also it adds a, a nice wall in um, so that you can expand pretty safely. And here, uh, best should be throwing down the offensive gas relatively soon. Okay. The barracks goes up. The gas goes down. Okay, so um, with the offensive gas, and by the way, it, it, it might seem like there's a lot of different 
builds that kind of look like this, but it all kind of comes from the same place. Like, you can make the gateway in your main and then do the gas steal. Mm -hmm. You can make the gateway on the low ground and do the gas steal. You can make the, the gateway in the middle of the map, like we saw Bisu mm -hmm. do in the last ASL, and take the gas. You could even make the gateway in their main and take the gas. Yeah, yeah. That's, but it's all that's kind of... True. It's it, it, it's different versions of the same build, and a lot of the same ideas are still at play here. Look at this game. Dude, Rush's SCV micro Rush. is sick. <laughs> Get back here. He is trying so hard. Dude, he wants that seed so bad. How embarrassing. Dude, SCV is like <laughs> wave dashing like it's Smash Brothers really? to get over there. <laughs> it's like, jeez, man. He's going to get... Oh, he gets it. That's crazy. That was a jousting SCV right there. making those angry gorilla noises mm -hmm. what I think when I see that. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, he makes the offensive eBay, which is one of the best moves you can do against offensive gas, honestly. Uh, if you get offensive engineering bay down, it slows their nexus and kind of forces them into gas. Yeah. Which gives you lots of time. You can get it, your command center up at a similar time to the nexus. and It actually trips them up a lot. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, when you see the eBay come down, you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. All right. Cancels that off. Uh oh. Surprised. Very, very surprised about that, that he did not just run by. Because it's just very annoying oh. if you run one Zelda in. It's like, even if it doesn't kill anything, it just takes like a lot of micro. It takes a lot of time. It's going to make the gas live longer. You know, all those things. So gas is taken. You know, it's it's been a little bit of back and forth here. Uh, I would say, looking at this, that I like it just slightly more for Rush. Yeah. I think had the eBay not come down, we'd, we'd say Protoss is, is a yes. couple more percentage points ahead. Yeah, but, yeah. It's um, close, though. I mean, you wouldn't say someone's going to win because of this situation. What about two Zealot Sartosis? <laughs> it's that yeah, same yeah. SCV waves da wave dashes away. <laughs> huh. What's that all about? I don't know, actually. I mean, um, it has to be a robo, right? I think, I mean, I think so. I can't imagine what I don't else know you what would else put there. It could be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it would be another gate, you know, and I don't think there's any special tech that you'd really want to hide. No, no. I mean, nowadays with how early Arbiter tech is, you're not, you, you know. You always have, like, a form of detection. You generally... You yeah, know, there it is, it, Robo. Robo is the only now, thing you would build here that would actually do something for you. And so, I mean, the idea is basically that you're going to get there a little bit more quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're certainly not going to scan and see the robo. The Terran, of course, doesn't know if there's a third base yet. Um, yeah, he might go and try to scout that since the probes just but remain th on the ramp. There's so many spots Protoss can expand with on the map. I think yeah, you get there that and, is you look true. and you look. There's this problem of the two bases at the bottom right, mm -hmm. both of which Protoss can take. It's not like you have to take the one on your side either. You can take the one on the Terran side. Oh, if right. you do that, you're actually just like, what are you doing? Oh, on the bottom right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. No, it, totally yeah, valid. yeah. I thought you meant like the Terran's third or fourth. No, 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 well, no, 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 no. Tasteless. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I mean, in this bottom yeah, right yeah, corner, yeah. because no, totally. even if they check the third, you, you don't know. This happens in some of the matchups where mm -hmm. you're like, well, he could have actually taken a base somewhere else. So Rush is going to scout this, and this is one of these moments where we got to see, is he such a gamer that he pulls away? No. He saw it. Yeah, he saw it. Sometimes you see these guys that are so fast, they're like, no nexus and they pull away and it's like oh yeah. it's too bad you, oh, you weren't I, a little that's bit what slower. you meant by such a game yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you were a little bit worse you would have scouted yeah. that okay, so the goon comes down and finds that scv gonna go ahead and chase him away but now that you know that the robo's there it's like oh, you're it's not gonna take scary. damage it's way less scary mm -hmm. now walking over to kill it is act I, I think a lot of people would see that and say why does he go kill it uh, Terran doesn't really have a good army right now. He has three to no. four Marines, and the first tank is about to pop out. That is not something that's going to fight two Zealots and a Dragoon and Sooner Reaver. No, you, you can't you can't fight it, but I think knowing helps out a lot. And, you know, that, that is important tech you can kill off later. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see this used very much in pro matches anymore. Like, it used to be oh, the proxy really... Robo? Yeah, it used to be used a lot back in the day, and it just seems like people... Even a couple of years ago, it was kind of popular still. Yeah, this year, I feel like this is the first time we've casted somebody doing this in a while. I think you're right, actually. Now, granted, we've casted so many StarCraft games at this point in time that it's turned our memories into oatmeal and everything kind of blends together, but I believe yeah. we are correct about that. 
Uh, our brains are the melting pot of StarCraft. Yes. <laughs> <You're just laughs> We've talked about it like that. Can you name the three GSL champions from four years ago? I'm like, uh, I Definitely don't know. <laughs> it's probably Maru. I don't know. Okay, yeah, Maru, this. maybe Rogue. Uh, <laughs> Flies oh. over the turret. Ah. Oh, the Marines came and... Ah. Oh, he's going to target that. Yeah, gamer. Gamer. <laughs> Okay, so this was this went well for Rush. Like it could have gone slightly better, but he lost like a tank and some Marines and maybe a turret, and he killed a Reaver, a shuttle, two Zealots. This like this is very good for Terran. You're happy with this? Yeah, um, I think that Protoss got in and, and and they did get something, which is not bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, but losing the shuttle um, and the uh, you know, the, the I mean, the Zealots are not a big deal, but basically losing the Shuttle and the Reaver is, is pretty bad, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, the idea of making that that close is that sometimes you get in right before the turret finishes. Oh, All yeah. these timings are very ironed out. That's and true. so when you get to, if, if you can actually get on the inside rim and start to kill workers, it can be pretty damaging. Oh, yeah, especially turrets. Yeah. Like, you don't have Goliaths when you make turrets. So yeah. you actually don't have anything else once but, it's in the base. I mean, he saw it, and so he made his turrets earlier, mm -hmm. and he stopped it. Um, we could still have double robo again, by the way, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely possible. It, it wouldn't even be that bad because the proxy robo will still be very useful in that regard. Um, adding a couple more gates. Okay. I think what we'll see here is the kind of, like, delay your third base into oblivion type of play. Yeah. Where you're really massing up on Dragoons and Zealots and Shuttles and Observers and whatnot, and you just kind of keep them on the fringe. You try to slow Terran down from actually being able to push out and take that third. Now, these, these tanks are actually to zone everything out so the Vultures can run by, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh-oh. Oh, he knew what he was Went doing. Went down the wrong alley, my friend. <laughs> yeah, pretty good contain, actually. I like the light Dragoon setup out mm -hmm. here. It's like enough that, you know, if anything comes out too far, you can kind of hold it off. But then it's tempting to go down that alley. And, I mean, it's a very clean setup overall here. I'm sorry, that was a forge. And what else was that? Citadel. A Citadel, Okay. Yeah, so a bit late on the Citadel, but that's okay. It's a very Dragoon-heavy strategy anyways. Uh, we'll see how many shuttles he ends up going for with this, but it's really about slowing down that third base. Ooh, I like the dropship. When your opponent's containing you this heavily, the dropship can have a lot of use. Yeah, it, but it, if it can get out without being spotted, look at the minimap. I mean, even the Robo kind of spots. Yeah. Is he going to try to thread right. this needle through the He might, spot? he might. Like, he knows where that is, so he knows that... It's very okay. unlikely for you. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. That is like stealth bomber, man. Dude. That it just goes right through everything. He got right through the violin string of darkness yeah. on the map. <laughs> it's Mission Impossible where he's moving through the laser field fields. This is going to be awesome. Okay, going to drop a couple vultures here at the natural. Going to bring two up to the main as well. And it looks like he's going to get a good amount of probes with this. The harassment here of Rush doing fantastically. That was awesome. Look at this taste. So much damage. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, I will tell you, he's not killing enough workers to, to, to really make this pay for oh! himself. Okay, that was, that was pretty good. I mean, you're kind of hoping for that real money explosion there. Uh, I think this cannon actually can't hit these vultures. Yeah, not at the edge. Yeah, it's just kind of weirdly enough placed. Dude, this was... I like this so well, much for Rush. Like, I'll be doing this tomorrow. Anything you can do to slow down the Protoss on three bases is going to slow down their ability to run over your army. So it's mm. actually huge. Uh-oh. Yeah, three speed shuttles. It's a bit scary. Only two Goliaths. So that's a lot of volleys to take these down. Okay, let's see how he can do the... Dive bombing commences on top of the sea shank, so the oh. Reavers are out as well. Some good hits. Very nice Reaver shots here. Connects and takes out those tanks, but there's not quite enough. Mm. I always wonder, because I don't I'm not very good at this, but the whole hotkey setup here for the Protoss, because this is sort of a new way to play mm. that requires you to like basically be engaged with your hockey setup in a very different way. Because mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of the Protosses just lose the shuttles after the attack. Yeah, that's very true. Well, right now, Rush has done a lot of damage. 
Like, Best just killed his own yeah. pylon to get up there. Yeah, and right when he killed it, he just suicided mm -hmm. the uh, uh, vultures on top of that. Yeah. Now, no. <laughs> Best can still bust him, though. A lot of tanks so? were killed. I, I mean, it, it, it is, I think, a little bit possible. Okay. It's one of these things where it seems like Terran might break free, and then the next three shuttles come in, and it's like, oh, yeah, you don't really have that many tanks anymore, do you? He did lose a lot of tanks, but I think, like, the, his position is so nice. It, the vultures that he has out on the map, he's added some turrets to his front location. He still hasn't taken his third, but that's okay considering what's happened this game. The game has just been so, so active on both sides. So finally coming up, bringing a couple of uh, Goliaths here as well. The Protoss doesn't lose when Terran gets the third base. It just means the game goes on. And, you know, a lot of Protosses have concluded this is one of the best ways to play this map is to try to thwart the Terran's plans for a third base. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you can do that long enough, it's, just, it's an easy game from there on out. Um, now, I see two shuttles. Am yeah. I correct about that? I don't yeah. think there's anything else, and I have to assume the Robo is being remade. But I I don't think that Best can actually stop Rush from expanding now. Right? Oh, you mean like uh, go across the map in some way? No, I think you I just... Think, I, think I think you rotate Vultures a little bit, you build up, you finish your mm -hmm. upgrades, you secure your three bases, uh, and then he can think about pushing. Is he not remaking a Robo? Because I just don't see it on the map. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, he does have quite a lot of observers out here. Yeah. It just seems like maybe finances are tight back at home here. Mm -hmm. Well, they definitely are tight, tight, right? Like, he's only on three bases right now. We're 13 minutes in. A lot of times you have four mining bases right there. Uh, he took that damage from the vultures as well. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm still really liking this game for Rush. He's just playing some beautiful games. Yeah, Rush is really kind of weathered everything that Protoss tries to throw at the Terran and, and trip him up. And, and so much of TVP is about that, is kind of dodging with grace each um, cow drop that the uh, the Protoss mm -hmm. is trying to throw at you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so now we've got a Terran on three bases. We've got a very healthy economy. Now, Snow did get the second forge, which I really like. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to give him a little bit more presence with his army, uh, you know, having those upgrades. And it's not always good to suicide vultures out like this, but I think in this case, it's, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Because there's not that many expansions out, and so if you can get that, like, horde of vultures over there, you're going to kill every single probe. You've killed off a fourth of the workers Protoss mm -hmm. has. Yeah, and you always want to trade out vultures as you get to higher supply anyways. You never really need more than two groups. Right. So it's great to throw them away, lay mines with the new ones, send them out, throw them away. Uh, trade them for whatever you can while you build up that tank and Goliath count. Now, Best does force these back for the most part. A few more running by once again. And look at this. He has another group already leaving across the middle of the map. Rush yeah. is so active right now. now. He's doing a great job, and he's filling the map up with um, uh, spider mines here. And I mean, it's kind of hard when you're uh, the Protoss at this moment. If you don't have observers everywhere... Because if you move in a direction that maybe is, you know, you weren't aware there, there are observers there, you can lose huge chunks of your army. And right now, by the way, Rush is actually, supply-wise, outgrown mm. the Protoss, which is kind of scary. Protoss doesn't have any presence on the bottom right, which makes the pushing a lot more straightforward here. Yeah, the Vulture's continuing to lay those mines out. It's got just great zoning. There's just no vision. Look at this vision of best. He sees very, very little of what Rush is doing. He can, I mean, I'm sure his imagination is going wild with the amount of siege tanks that actually exist over there. Now, Best trying to expand towards the bottom right, but Rush is going to start moving out. What is this? <laughs> what yeah. am I looking at here? I don't actually know why there are cannons there at all. <laughs> that almost seems like a brain fart move. That's like kind of, I, like, I'm sure he was thinking something that seemed smart at the time, but... That well, doesn't guess, do much, does it? Yeah, I, I just... It stops vulture <laughs> rotations over there, but that's it? Maybe, yeah. Um, I think he's going to actually try to run this over. I mean, the thing is, you know, th this is the only other base Terran can take as the game goes on, so I guess he kind of wants to play the same game. Mm. He was playing by trying to prevent the third. He just wants to do it at the fourth. Yeah. And I guess maybe if you have cannons there, 
it, especially because they were pushed back far enough, there's no easy way to hit it with tanks, but instead he just had that whole position wiped. And notice that Terran can push up here, expand into this location, and then take out the Protoss' fourth and probably win the game. Well, if he takes out that fourth base, that's going to be yeah. rough for Bess. He is taking the bottom right. Another drop coming up as the Arbiter flies by. Siege tank and a couple of uh, vultures here trying to take out that cannon. Not the most effective drop, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, kind of a funny little engage there. And Rush is basically elbowing his way through the map here. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, any little small bits of Dragoons that were intended to control areas, he just comes in here and smashes them. And then he pulls back. And, and there's no real way to counterattack. And even though this map can feel big at the start, when Terran gets control of the four bases, there's actually not any real where like location to push in that's easy. Mm -hmm. You kind of organically end up with turrets and uh, mines over there in the middle outside your natural. Uh, if the game starts out with, um, you know, the, the, the Terran trying to fight for the third. And so this can lend itself to a pretty easy late game if Protoss didn't really play the control game well. Now, yeah. notice, notice the patience there. This is really the yeah. sign of a good Terran player is when they siege up, they take a fight and then they turn around. So much of this game is about getting so far with an attack and then regrouping and binding more mm -hmm. hotkeys and being extremely patient. I mean, a lot of Terrans, I mean, we saw this in, in the series we casted earlier where it was like six tanks attacking up a ramp, mm -hmm. a large ramp over the, at the Protoss' third. It's like, well, that's kind of how you lose, man. Well, that's the dichotomy you know? of Terran because both those games were Rush. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this time he's playing a much more patient game. Mm -hmm. And if he can just push in here and win the fight against his army, he can cut off where all the new uh, rally points are going to be from the gateways. It's why Best is trying to run around. Best may try to run all the way around and go to the fourth base. Yeah, I think you're probably right that that's the idea, but Rush is kind of chasing. Now he's leading with so many of his vultures, but Best continues to run away. There is an Arbiter that's going to be sent in at this point. So it looks like he's going for a recall. This might be Best's last stand. Oh my oh, God. Oh, that EMP, the two EMPs. It was hallucinated Arbiter and EMP'd all of it. I forgot that the EMP kills the hallucinations. Yeah, any spell that touches hallucination kills it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. That's funny. I was thinking because it kills off all the mana and it's like it, the, the hallucination uses mana. <laughs> you know? So if Psystorm touches it, you, you're actually, dies? you're like the like ancient Norse people or something where you just like made something up. It's, <laughs> you're like, yes, and then the god of Arbiters like kills it for, <laughs> for sinning with the EMP or something. <laughs> I think this game's over. It is. Yeah. Protoss has tried to run around and, and Rush basically, in, in a pretty impressive maneuver, basically chased down everything shut down the base and is now boxed in the remaining units. And this is one of the more impressive TVPs yeah. uh, I've seen. I agree with you 100%. That's literally what I was going to say. This is one of the most impressive Terran versus Protoss games that I can really think of. In fact, I mean, the, this series from Rush was immaculate. Th yeah. This is... No, he's, he's so good. This is top of the world TVP play. Yeah, some of the best TVP I've cast, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm scratching my head like, man. Like, no, he looks so he looks so he good. Do. He looks so good. It's ridiculous. I'm actually just sitting here trying to think, like, how do I do these things? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so another fight over here. Um, and, you know, the problem is there's just there's too much from Terran. And so that's it. GG Best loses. Rush gets that spot that Larva has. He's well positioned here as we go into the second season of the year here for ASL. Yeah, very well done. And uh, nice to have a Terran up there. Ready to run a group. Best has to be a little bit disappointed, but I would be absolutely shocked if he doesn't make it through the qualifiers. Oh, I mean, we're going to have all three of these guys that didn't make it today, I think, here. I mean, yeah, I would say I, so. I, I mean, if you're a top eight guy, you're basically always making it. Yeah, game. I mean, the, the issue really is that it can be such a gauntlet to even get to the top eight again that these guys really want to fight to try to just secure that spot and sit mm -hmm. comfortably. Um, and, you know, and I'll tell you what, Best, one of his worst days. It felt like he played all right against JYJ. I, I felt like Snow actually had the worst day out of everyone. Well, Snow's was much worse, but I think Best, honestly, is, mm -hmm. you know, lots of hiccups. Yeah. Bumpy games for sure. But congratulations to Rush. Uh, really fantastic and going to be very excited to see what he can pull off in this next season. I think he is, I think it's likely that he will be the next Terran to win a championship. It's really kind of between him and Light. Yeah. Uh, 
Rush, kind of the new age of Terrence, looking to be extremely clean. And he kind of just, he outpaces the Protoss. The Protoss has his mischievous tricks, mm -hmm. you know? He's, he's trying to, he, it's it's like he's the roadrunner and the Protoss is Wiley e. Coyote, you know? <laughs> yeah, and the Protoss yeah. has all these tricks, but he goes meep, meep, and just, you know, pushes through. And, and, and really by the end, you're looking at the Protoss position. It's like, oh yeah, what do you do now? Mm -hmm. What if he stops everything you tried? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's the question. And uh, Best did not have an answer for him. So here are the seeds. You can see Rush just earned the seed mm -hmm. uh, over here, but we had Queen. Hero and Mini, of course, already secured. Mini getting uh, second place. And I think one of the best StarCraft finals in the last couple of years, to be honest, StarCraft 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, going to Game 7 is always just amazing. And, of course, it'll be sad not to have Larva in this next season. He's always just an awesome guy to add in. But here we have an interview, guys. <laughs> 해도 우와. 좋은 경기력으로 못할 것 같아서 오. 오늘 그냥 뚫어버릴 생각으로 하고 왔거든요. 그렇죠. 그래서 좀잘된것 같아요. 이제 지금 예정일이 어, 잡혔기 때문에 여기서 예선 갈 시간이 없잖아요. 네 맞아요. 와 오늘, 오늘. 네 야무미 애기 나오면 이제 와. 조리 해줘야 되기 때문에 역시 시간이 좀 없어가지고 역시 아빠는 위대합니다. 가족은 정말 대단해요. <웃음> 와 이렇게. 오늘 진짜 여기저기 상대방의 생각 잘 읽었고 몰래 건물까지 발견하고 그리고 상대방이 아비토 돌리는 그 타이밍까지 예측하고 정말 완벽한 모습을 보여줬거든요. 네. 자, 이 정도 기세대로 나면 이번 시즌 테란으로서 지금까지 테란이 힘을 좀못 쓰고 있는 상황인데 유영진 선수가 이 저그라인드 프로토다인 무너뜨리면서 우승까지 넘볼 수 있는 거 아닙니까? 어, 이번 시즌 좀 우승을 넘보고 있긴 하거든요. 와. 좀, 네, 좀 마음 좀 새로 다 잡고 꽉 잡고 있어가지고 우승할 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 야. 어, 그동안 참여했던 그 ASL이 있는데 자, 이번 시즌 자신의 그 파워를 측정하자면 은 가장 강한 시즌입니까? 어, 네, 가면 갈수록 발전하는 것 같고 이제 좀더 이제 대회에서도 좋은 경기력 보여드릴 수 있을 것 같아서 자신이 있어요. 네, 목소리에서 힘이 느껴지고요. 정말 유영진 선수의 노력의 아이콘이잖아요. 지금까지 항상 성심을 보여주면서 이렇게 실력이 끌어올렸습니다. 이 수많은 팬분들의 그 응원이 있었기 때문에 그리고 가족의 응원이 있었기 때문에 지금 이 위치에 자리하게 된 건데요. 네. 그분들에게 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 어, 일단 요새 좀 폼이 떨어져서 걱정하시는 분들 많았을 텐데 좀 대회에서 해보니까 오늘 게임이 잘 되더라고요. 그래가지고 좀 대회에서 이제 더 좋은 경기력 보여드릴 수 있으니까 좀 믿음에 보답할 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 네. 다시 한번 축하드리고요. 자, ASL에서 멋진 활약 기대하겠습니다. 축하드려요. 감사합니다. 네, 고맙습니다. 자, 이렇게 유영진 선수의 이야기를 나눠봤습니다. Uh, you know, a great day today here and a little taste of what is to come. Um, as we're going to have an amazing next season. Guys, uh, we love you uh, and we need your support. If you're not already, go to patreon.com forward slash ASL English. This does not just go to support um, casting for this tournament. We've been doing King of the Hill. Uh, obviously, we just did this wild card match. That's yeah. something we would never have been able to do before. In fact, we never um, got to do that in previous seasons, that's right. even when Afrika TV was still putting on the English production. And we have other stuff in the works that we can't quite talk about yet. We know um, a lot of different things, actually, in the works here. Uh, so, in other words, if you support us on the Patreon uh, we're going to have new things every month or something that's mm -hmm. going to be high quality StarCraft 1 content uh, that you guys can uh, enjoy when there is not an ASL. Because let's be mm -hmm. honest, there's not enough ASLs. Dude, there's not enough uh, Brood War in general. There's not enough Brood War in general, but now that we have this thing set up, you can come there and support us. So, uh, again, please go there and, and uh, yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it, guys. Okay, uh, here are the qualifiers for the upcoming season, guys. It's coming right up. In fact, by the time you watch this, maybe it's already done. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the qualifiers are going to be awesome. The tournament itself is starting just towards the end of this month, and uh, we're very, very excited. You know, we have uh, our team from last season back. Nice username, uh, Cobra Venom right. and uh, Banana Soup. Yes. going to be doing <laughs> the IDs of our nerds that are working on this and helping us to bring it all to life. 
Uh, it's we're going to be putting it out a lot quicker. We have it kind of yeah. the, the process oiled better as well. So we hope you enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, I think uh, like everything that you know, any, any show or anything like this. We're improving as we're getting for sure. know, more time to do it, and this was kind of a crazy series of events that led us into this whole situation we're in now. But it's working out, and we will keep doing that um, and giving you guys that great t content. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have. We'll see you for season two of this year. Bye-bye. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage, and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time None of you people can tell me to stop This time, like the last time You better get ready